right, well, hello everybody. This is uh, it's me, Francisco, joined by my good buddy Charles here for Sports Goofs number one eighty four, and I guess there's some sort of direction here, Charles. I'm I'm not sure. You said you had some stuff you wanted to talk about, so maybe you should direct us with this one because I have no idea. I know the World Series is over. So that happened the day of our last episode. And... <laughs> Which is appropriate because we were on a special Wednesday episode. Yeah, that's true. And we also, uh, well, there's some baseball stuff that happened over the week because the, the season's over. Free agency's basically started already. And there's the MLB Awards finalists that have been, been announced and some new hirings and firings. That's been... <laughs> been kind of fun we can talk about that because i know you want to talk about it because you're you especially want some chaotic things to happen for sure i live in chaos and yeah then we have the nfl so week nine happened we can talk about that because my narratives are still being pushed and nba is happening nhl is happening and i guess there's college football we can talk about how the u is still not back so that's, mm-hmm. that's 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 mm. that's great I mean, <laughs> and this is a big week, actually, where you and I actually have to be invested. Yeah, yeah. But uh, hopefully it, it, it doesn't really uh, affect me too much. I, I, I can be uh, I can be a, as casual a fan as possible uh, this weekend, hopefully. Uh, but if, if things go awry, then uh, I won't hear the end of it. And, and uh, yeah, it's... Especially, can I give you a preview, a spoiler? Yeah. Uh, after like three weeks of me saying it's a trap game, it's a trap game, it's mm. a trap game. This is the trap this game. Is y'all, this is y'all's trap game. Yeah. And we've, I, we've I, had I feel it. Calls. I, I feel it. I, I feel it. And I hate to feel it because I've legitimately hated everything that Mario Cristobal has done all season. You guys have heard me. Mm. You know, this is the the max potential the team had was possibly a 10 and 3 team with their searching games in college football, right? Somewhat. Without, without, yeah, depending. It's so weird. Like, I'm like, but how do you, depending on conference in Notre Dame always gets excuses, whatever. But I was like, all right, I'm looking at it, and yeah, I've had some close calls, but Jordan yes, Travis have. hasn't really had a lot of like hard competition the last few weeks. And hear me out the defense is good for Miami, mm. not great. Like it, it's in the middle of the line out of college football, which is fine. It's the offense. And then for whatever reason, Mario Cristobal's sick obsession to make Tyler Van Dyke into Justin Herbert, and it's just not going to happen. And it just, there's like literally no game plan. And that's how you just get like, six points in a game like it's mm. just uh, but for whatever reason the spirits tell me and i could be wrong and maybe it's because i'm competing against both you and my paralegal who also went to fsu and i'm just like every everybody has like well where's your pride i'm like this is the only time to be pride because what do i love the most in life i love being right mm. and i'm almost charles Dramas is a is a fun ego but everybody feels great feeling right so that's that's a little thing on college football that i have to it right and yeah, yeah, the, the, it'd be nice for the Florida State Seminoles con- to control their own destiny by by continuing the un- this undefeated season, try and get to that college football playoff. And speaking of control, Charles, uh, the background music for today's episode is straight from control. Yes, and for those who watched a little bit last week, but we can't, we could probably one day publish the group chat text if it isn't like half of it's just me doing inane stuff and then Francisco being petty, then Andrew trying to be like, hi guys, I'm like 10 days behind, but here's some other stuff. I'm like, I thought we talked about it. Here's correct but counsel. It's, <laughs> it's correct like, counsel, right? <laughs> yeah, I was like, dude, we both sent that. I'm like, but thank you for trying. Like, it happens. We all have different lives and me when i get to lunch break i like i feel bad for francisco and andrew because i do bombard you guys from that 11 30 to 12 30 hour where i'm like all right it's time where you get <laughs> seven direct tweets about one thing for wrestling and then seven <laughs> direct tweets about you know all this stuff yeah. for sports and then my silly reactions and then seven direct tweets about black friday because we're about to get sick obsessed here guys mm. we're about to and i don't know what i'm gonna say appropriately so please y'all don't hate me or not but this is the best way I can say it. We're about to get like Selena's manager kind of obsessed with Black Friday deals. It's that season. <laughs> I've got three hundred, four hundred dollars worth of gift cards. I have Amazon points. I got. It's gonna be bad. It's gonna be bad. It's it's just gonna be terrible. So we get that. I almost lost my train of thought. But what Francisco and I have been just doing on the show, and then on, of course, um, the group chat is just we're kind of obsessed with Rattling Wake too. 
it, it's coming. You yeah. know, and I, I sent you a screenshot. We're sports show. Everybody. I sent you a screenshot of Ross saying X, Y, Z. So Ross to give insight, because we're continuing the conversation, like how it's a connected remedy verse. It's a connected goof verse. So you play as two characters in Alan Wake 2. It's not really a spoiler if you watch the trailer. It's um, you play as Alan, obviously, and you play as uh, Sage Anderson, who's the cop, and they're supposed to interwine. But you can kind of play their stories interchangeably. There is no set pattern, which I find super interesting for yeah, me. It's like and Sonic I, Adventure. Yeah, Sonic Adventure. But <laughs> you know, he's just going majority of one character and going to leave Wake for last. I'm like, I kind of feel like. Because what does Remedy like to be is a, a no pun intended, controlled gaming of like television, cinema. Mm-hmm. So I, I already have this idea of how I want to play it. So he's already in like the, he's saying eight, eight and a half, nine. Ross is a hard sell sometimes on video games and we'll have disagreements on what is the best kind of ranking and rating. But I'm a, we're, 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 we're going to do it, guys. I just played Borderlands mm-hmm. 3 DLC, the final one, which was what I needed to be a seven, right? Um, to kind of taste the cleanse the palate of what greatness was to go to average, right? And it being a DLC too that has no consistency really in context for a lot of stuff. So we're, we're all right. We we were we were doing good things, big things, right? Doing some mm. big things. Um, so we had that, but that that was part of it. So yeah, you you get you've been bombarded with that as well in the chats. Yes, yes, I have, and. Um, well, uh, let's let's start. Could with... you succinctly explain to your sister what Alan Wake really was? I basically I feel like I feel like Pepe Silva. <laughs> I, I basically told her because I think it'd be something that if she could play it and if she had ever had time to play it, she'd be into because yeah. you know she 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 of course loves the Twilight Zone and and pretty much has the same taste as I do, right? Like I, I showed her, I, like I sent her the the. the the live stream of Aqua Teen Hunger Force, okay? And she was like, oh, they're, they're, they're going to go again? I'm like, yep, they're going to go again. So, like, we watch Aqua Teen together, right? So that's – so my sister's taste and stuff is is very – like, I derive my taste from her and then vice versa with mm-hmm. regards to comedy and, and some other stuff. I mean, she's – uh, unlike you, Charles, she's fully on to the, the, the Marvel uh, universe right now. She's she's watched everything at this point. Uh, I did, Except for, then... like – uh, maybe uh, I think she's catching up with some stuff, and I told her, "Well, you can watch Venom and stuff like that too, if you want to get that little bit of stuff." <laughs> Venom yeah. and, Car- and Maximum Carnage, whatever it was called. Let there um, be Carnage is actually a great movie. I don't care what I, I, says. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed it. I, I appreciate comic book or action movies that have the villain and the hero only go against each other one time. It really does feel like a high stakes because it's so tropish that either the villain finds a way to escape from an ass beating mm-hmm. one. Or um, I'll get you next time. I'll Spider-Man. get you next time. Or, or it's just you know somehow the that's my the Green hero... Goblin ex- <laughs> impression. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was it was it was not bad actually. Uh, or uh, I could try better. Hero... I'll get you, you next try. time, Spider Man. You'll never get away with this, Spider Man. Like you know yeah. we, we can do this all the time. Oh, no, that's, get... that's that's, that's skeleton. Well, yeah, <laughs> but that's the problem. No, no. We, we, I think we're on point to ninety six anime Spider Man Green Goblin. I don't think people realize the proliferation of the same actors doing all the this work. is the even, evolution even of the anime. show charles this is, we're, we're just gonna go full on just complete the, nerdum <laughs> it's the meta goofers essentially yeah. that comes into it even even not aqua team but if you watch every anime you know when it's not it, when it's christopher spot guys mm. you just know his voice but um there was a train of thought that i had there or the hero just like loses gets hurt and then trains to get back again looking at you dark night rises it's mm-hmm. every trope. And I understand that, that you have the stat pad, but like, you know, let there be cards, which is not a movie. I think we'd be talking about in November, 2023, but here we are. We can do whatever we want on this show. It's mm-hmm. our power, baby. It is the idea of like, it's 91 minutes. And if it was a minute too long, we would feel it really badly, but I appreciate for what it is. The thing with Marvel, I'm, I'm just going to put my control down. Cause this is me talking with my hand. <laughs> we just got to a serious topic now, but, but, but this was two years ago was into <laughs> it, with Indeed. not into the spider verse. It was yeah, into the no way home. My problem with Marvel is that when someone does something better than what they were doing with it, they, they, they lose the train of thought and they go, Oh, look a squirrel. And that's what happened with the spider verse stuff. And they're like, okay, we're going to do no way home. And, objectively no way home is an eight right it, no way home is an eight but like it just didn't resonate to me it was cheap it was tawdry it was it was artificial and and that was the problem because that stuff made so much money they're from everybody you know kevin Feige, i think that's mm-hmm. his name Feige, Feige. i don't know how to I say it. he he 
he's like, this is what everybody wants for everything that we go and get from. And it's fine. That's exactly, you know what, to relate to a sports show, it's like Titans football, right? We're just going to run the ball, mm. old school. It's Ravens football, run the ball, old school. Even though they're trying to tell you now it's different with Todd Monk and you need wide receivers to actually catch. Look at no you, OBJ. Like, you know, you get a touchdown garbage time, get out of here. But it is formulaic. And so – you get you make like movies about people that doesn't matter like the black widow movie we didn't need not because we shouldn't deserve it but it was like two generations too late or two phases too late right and then you're making the tv shows out vision and wanda first off you actually read the comics wanda's so much superior in the comic books your boy is a nerd guys Mm. you know he does read comics when i remember that i have a damn account and i actually own some graphic novels too i still haven't read last ronin we'll get to that eventually um but like vision and wanda i'm like eh Loki, I don't care about Loki, but formulaic, right? They're like, hey, Tom Hiddleston, he's handsome. We know Tom Hiddleston is handsome. I'll just watch him in another movie where he's handsome. <laughs> you know, I watched him in King yeah. Kong. I'm like, damn, this is a handsome guy. You know, yeah, he's good. He was in a, uh, you know, like a Crimson Peak. I'm like, this is a handsome guy. You know, that, that's fine. That, the, you, I think he's the best of what they're giving out, even though I have really no, because I don't like time travel as a construct anyway. You know this, man. I don't like multiverse as a, as a construct. So I'm like, oh, God, these are two of my less too, favorable things. Too convenient. I, yeah, well, it's just Deus Ex Machina is everywhere. I'm like, no, stick to something. Even though Endgame is a yeah. great movie, create it's certain good- rules and try and stick to them, and not try and circumvent them. Right, and then you get Hawkeye, which I liked Hawkeye because it's a Christmas movie. It's basically Die Hard too, right? When when you really foundationally think about it, and so She Hulk was what it was. It, it was it was enjoyable. But we're being lawyers, and then they also have the Daredevil cameos. So obviously, you I have I have Matt Murdock as my back crowd right now on my phone you know not, not hannibals if i had children they wouldn't mm-hmm. be there i'm like i'm so i'm sorry little you know child but you know matt murdoch was a blind lawyer who beat people up and he was about <laughs> justice but he was a vigilante it's a great oxymoron i have a daredevil side clip so it, it, it works into it but i did watch the echo trailer because now they're going to do spotlight so echo is a side character in hawkeye i might watch hawkeye for the holidays because it's a christmas show and they have wilson fisk in there and i swear to christ like vincent d'onofrio is just getting fatter and fatter but in a good way because you talk about method acting he's like i will become wilson fisk i'm like yeah dude you're really looking like him and so <laughs> I, I, i'm in it i'm sorry and then they try to do the same formula stuff with star wars which has just been like i don't even want to look i watched obi-wan I, you know i had to i had to and mm. i enjoyed it for it was retcon the shit too out of everything but all the other stuff and or and uh rogue one was fine enough as it is i don't have to do that oh you can watch uh ahsoka do i do I really though? Like, can I just YouTube it? And that's what Marvel has become. Or like, can I YouTube it? And when it just becomes very, yeah, just like, give me, just give me the the Cliff's notes. I I hate to say this, but I I treat I treat my time of watching or playing games or or reading as if someone who has like a terminal illness. And I know the days are coming. Doctor says six months. I'm gonna utilize that six months because it's it's. I don't even have a demanding job in comparison, maybe you or other people who are attorneys, but. I'm only really going to be enjoying the weird stuff that I like at 60, you know, up until 60. Right. Mm. And it, it has every decade. I'm injured, man. And I can, I found a way to go to the gym because it's me. I'm a psychopath, but it's about like, don't waste my time. Now I feel every ex-girlfriend just literally just spoke to me and just like calling me a hypocrite in my head. She's, <laughs> I felt all you Hispanic women light a candle. I'm a changed man now. Damn it. Um, but that's my problem with Marvel. And it's not like DC does any better because when they actually try to do stuff, like I could not watch the James Gunn Peacemaker mo- show. I tried like three episodes. I'm like, this got boring. But it, it's just so artificial. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so there we go. We went on a very long Charles rant. But I feel like we need it because tis the season, right? Because True. now we have the Marvels coming out this week. Yeah, look, I like the first Miss Marvel or Captain Marvel. I I, I, I thought it was good. Yeah, I'm so proud of you. The, the Jude Law stuff, I thought it was funny. It was like a 7 7 half. Some people don't like Brie Larson because, you know, they think it's, you know, anti men because she says that there's inequality. No, there is, guys. And this is from like years ago. So I'm not even going to retread that stuff. I didn't watch Miss Marvel, you know, Kamala Khan show because I'm like, oh my God, like, I'll get to it. But I, now what happens is COVID made me lazy. So if I just know you're going to put on a streaming service in a couple months. Where I could just buy it. Like I, I haven't seen Across the Spider Verse yet. Maybe one day I get to it. No promises for reasons, but um, I think because of my laziness, I'm like I could just watch it at home. There's some movies I like the big screen spectacle, but it's not dire anymore. You know what yeah. I mean? Like the last yeah, big screen movie I, I saw think, was Barbie. Yeah, I think uh, man, what was I, I? You know, I go to the movies just if I I'm going out with somebody, right? That's yeah. the only reason I would go. Um, 
uh, I think the last actual spectacle, well, spectacle movie that I watched just because I wanted to see it with a crowd. Of course, I had to see Sonic Two, right? Yeah, but the, which that, I still haven't seen. <laughs> but but that that was that was a uh, that was a fun experience going to that movie because I, I think I saw the not the official release. It's like the pre-release, right? That they that some theaters participate mm-hmm. in. So yeah. I was like, I think it was like a the day, night before. Yeah, the thing. night before, and like it wasn't, it wasn't packed at all, at all. It was just like me, the girl I was dating, and then the um, uh, maybe a, a group of like ten people in the background uh, behind us, and, and and you could tell like these are just Sonic the Hedgehog fans. Yeah, all lifers. of us adults. Like it was whatever ten o'clock, and I was just like, and, and my goodness, Charles. I mean, you know the spoilers for this movie, right? I, I know, I know, like, you know, Shadow. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. so to so that moment... Like, which is not really a spoiler when it's a damn given. No, it was know? a, you know, post credit scene, and... It's on Paramount. I'll get to it eventually. I think I kind of want to watch it when they actually release the Knuckle show. That way I can go just full nerd. Yeah. Because, you know, it, it, it's just... It, it feels But right. But th- that, that spectacle, everybody was like, Oh, no! Holy! It's Shadow! It's I'm like, yeah. And I was I was clapping my hands. Yes! We're getting Sonic Adventure were... 2! I thought they were going to do Mecha Sonic, unless he's into. And I just well, know, that, like I said, when I haven't seen it. So but. far, it's Shadow, and so far, Jim Carrey hasn't signed on, as far as we know, mm-hmm. uh, to the third movie. So it might just be a whole CG spectacle. And mm-hmm. there's always a possibility, right, that they could do Metal Sonic with Shadow and have yeah. two different things like that. That's always a possibility or, or like a death egg robot, something like, like maybe Dr. Eggman isn't there, but he leaves something behind to be, I have no idea. There's always a possibility, but well, the thing is, if you hear, hear me out, hear me out, hmm. you know, I'm not saying that we should recast Jim Carrey. I actually liked him the first one, but there's a point where Eggman was a fat guy. Right. And I don't know how two ends, but you could make him a heavy guy, and you just give me Danny DeVito with the red hair and everything. I'm just in for the for the <laughs> memes. But he, I mean, basically, when he's Oinka, whatever her name is, the art curator in Sunny, you just put on red hair and a mustache. I'm just mm. saying, man. Yeah, yeah. It, it's some roles. But, but some always roles Sunny and Kingdom Hearts that meme. <laughs> I, I listen, and I said it in a tweet. I'm trying to follow us on the Twitter, Charles the True, FJOJR, Dan Frijole, Sports underscore Goose. I don't like to comment on people I don't know, but X or Twitter has changed so much. I feel like I kind of need it for stability. But as I said, I would pay double the price of the game if I can get Danny DeVito as a summons. And I want him greased up baby, uh, Danny DeVito as Frank. And then Mac, because Mac as your companion, because he's been coming in his bulking season. Mm. You know, uh, and that, that's what it is. Because you can have his powers be, you know, bulk Mac and then like rip Mac. I, I just need it. Speaking the other of, three wouldn't work. Yeah, yeah it, it'd be weird. Uh, well, speaking. This is a sports show, guys. We promise we'll get to sure, it. Sure, but I do. I do want to talk about this because we we there's some other stuff. So uh, you mentioned, of course, there's a Zelda movie being planned, and, and I love Andrew, who has not been like I haven't played a, a you know Legend of Zelda game. I'm like, how's it going to work? How he doesn't talk? Mm. Yeah, yeah, but uh, I, I don't know. It might be a modern homage to the old TV show because they had the talking link. I remember movie. that. Yeah, you know, excuse me, princess, like that. Well, then um, I need Dennis. I don't care. <laughs> but then so, Howerton's gonna win an Oscar. All right, so it's fine. <laughs> so yeah, who do you cast as Link? That'd be just, Aaron. Just, T- just, Aaron Taylor Johnson. Uh, okay. Just looking up right now. Like I, because he came up. He, I think he was. I think he was. A, no, I don't know if he was a bullet train or not. I, Let's I see. Aaron that. Taylor he's playing, Johnson. He's playing Craven the Hunter. Okay. I, I. Yeah. You just dye his hair blonde, and and there you go. I guess. Yeah. You can also, you know, like it. it just I mean, makes... it depends. Miyamoto's doing this, so remember, uh, Miyamoto's. I, I don't know if he would want an adult Link, or just like the teenage Link, right? Because I. I I don't know, and then you can have you can you can you can uh, cast uh, Gan like whoever some hunky guy to be Ganondorf. You know what I, mean? I mean, Javier Bardem is Ganondorf to me, just on the facial features itself. You know, Javier what? Javier Bardem. Oh, wow, he's the first one to pop up. Yeah. Oh, okay. You see him like he's Sorry. in No Country for Old Men, but take around the like weird effing haircut. Yeah, that that he had in that movie, like it's the facial features. Yeah, for it's me. Got, got the big old Ganon, uh, yeah, Gerudo nose. <laughs> and, he, and, he, and he's Spaniard. He's married to Penelope you know, Cruz. Oh, 
Yeah, yeah. Javier Bardem is a fantastic actor. If mm. you have not, and I know you're like behind on some stuff, but yeah, I'm not know. the best barometer for movies. He, he, he won an Oscar for No Country for All Men. He yeah, was in Skyfall. Yeah. Um, he played uh, Prince Stride in Little Mermaid, which I didn't see. He was in Dune, probably the only good thing in that stupid ass movie three. Um, he was in Collateral for a very brief second, and Collateral is a fantastic film. If you guys haven't seen it, he was in. He, he, you know he's married Penelope Cruz, but he was in Pirates of the Caribbean, the fourth one, I think, or the fifth one. They made so many of them. Yeah, but yeah, the sea inside, which I think is a guy trying to kill himself, and he's going against like euthanasia. Like, like just a good. I, I just like him. Sometimes you just want the people to kind of get it and go. But mm -hmm. yeah, and they probably don't have the cast. They'll probably want someone younger. But like, he has very strong features. I can believe that he is like a King Gerudo, and he he can you know turn into a dragon. Just saying. Okay. Alrighty. And uh, what was the other thing? So we talk about that, and oh man, I just had it. I just had it in my mind, and I ah something, some other nerdy thing that we were going through. Oh yeah, Nickelodeon All Star Brawl. That's what it was. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to look at the lineup for this because I was very surprised by that review score by IGN. Yeah, and I was Cosmo, so anything Nickelodeon related right now is probably of my interest. That 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 was way like. A Hi. nine, yeah, a and, nine, and that's why I want to check to see what GameSpot does. Multiplayer cause... fighting game, yeah, and like fighting games though, they can always have niches, and that's what's beautiful about it. There's some people I know that absolutely just can't play one kind of brand game, but there's a community that really just enjoy it. You know, they're like, "That's my ish. That's what mm -hmm. we gravitate towards." So that that's why I'll pay attention and I'll listen. Like I can never, it's so weird. I can never really do Guilty Gear, right? It's too hard. But yeah. I can play Dragon Ball Fighters, you know, Tekken. I'm like, eh, but I'll play, you know, X. I, I mean, I like Tekken, but you know what I mean? It's like yeah, what's good for the goose is always good for the gander, but there's all clicks for everybody. Like Smash Bros. And I would explain to one of my coworkers, because um, he's a little bit younger. He's like, I haven't played Smash Bros. For some reason, I'm not that good at him. So like that. I'm like, well, I mean, just play, right? You yeah. can, there's, there's the technical players. There's the guys who use the weapons and truthfully the one rule of thumb i tell anybody who's learning smash for the first time is just don't be close to the ledges that's it mm -hmm. because you're just gonna pop it up in some way but you can find it and then so i watched the trailer as well like you and i think nickelode there there's some parts of nickelodeon i did not see like danny phantom well, that's why i want to go through the, the 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 roster here let's do it so we've got ang yeah from you know last airbender that of mm -hmm. course that makes sense have yeah. him uh, you have the Norbert and Daggett from Angry Beavers. Yep, which, that's uh, cool. That's their totally... ice climbers right there. Yeah, that's uh, my sister is going to love that reference right there. And I, <laughs> I kind of want to play it. I kind of want to buy it just for that alone. Because, um, <laughs> man, we adored that show, man. We just I absolutely like just – and now that I'm older um, and I, it's I, – I, is it on Paramount? I'm not even sure. I think it's on. I, would, I mean, it's I so. Not, they, you know, I think they sold a DVD box set a lot a while ago. Uh, but yeah, uh, April O'Neil from Ninja babe. Turtles. Uh, Azula from Airbender. Also kind of a babe. Yeah, yeah, but uh, she'll she'll kill you. That's fine. I did. <laughs> I get that. And yeah, Danny Phantom. I wasn't into Danny Phantom, so much like you. So I, I don't. Uh, I recognize the character. I, I recognize some of these, like Ember, also for Danny Phantom. I. I not into it. Um, uh, El Tigre from whatever it was like, a yeah. luchador show or whatever that they've got. I don't know. Uh, yeah, really. but it's one of the newer ones. It's like when we were aging out of this, I guess. Well, actually, not even. I think it was like within like the last ten years or something. So yeah, yeah it's not us. Uh, Donatello, right? Yeah, yeah. Good. You get a good medium long range guy out of it. All right. Yeah, yeah. So he's got more Ninja Turtles is always good for Charles. Yeah, but uh, they don't have all of them, do they? They'll probably do DLC with it. Yeah, those are probably be like two. Well, they said like four characters at least, right? So you would think mm -hmm. they'd have Leo and well, Michelangelo. Or they'll just do what uh, Injustice 2 did and just give you alternate um, attires. Well. Yeah, and then, yeah. It, you know, with, with some of their own personalities. I guess. But when you already got two of the four, why not just add the other two? Mm -hmm. uh, Garfield, because now that's a Nickelodeon show. Did, didn't even know. Yeah, they bought him out. So he's, he's a character now. So he's okay. one of theirs. Uh, so that'll be an interesting future thing, I guess. You know, this is the first crossover that he's in. I think he was in the last one. That's DLC, but but uh, but yeah. Now Garfield, uh, Gerald from Hey Arnold. Appropriate. That's cool. Yeah. Gerald's the coolest cat. Yeah. Uh, his grandma from Hey Arnold. Doesn't it doesn't feel right without grandpa, right? 
Yeah, but she was always the more crazy of the two. Yeah, that's true. She was always the one that like, like I, I, she must have been like a secret agent or something like that. In the past. I think that's what they mentioned. Well, yeah. that's what happened with. So, do you know Arnold's real last name? I forgot. I I, I didn't I, watch. I, I think I, I like his parents died because like. They unco- like they were like some sort well, of whistleblowers or whatever. They, they they didn't die. They were like landed on an island. But okay. I only know Arnold's last name. And I used to watch Arnold. Uh, hey Arnold, I know his last name because I saw him a pop. His real last name is Shortman. Oh okay. All and right. I'm like, bro, what? He's short, and he's a man. Like, <laughs> ni- '90s humor, you guys. But yeah. they did make the Rube movie revival. But I think on YouTube, it just just I need closure in my life sometimes. Mm. And what I need Disney to do. And they're doing X Men ninety seven. Hear me out, <laughs> yeah. Disney. You, you wanna, yeah, you wanna, you wanna get me to love out. Give mm-hmm. me the final season of Spider Man the Anime Series mm-hmm. with the with, with Christopher Barnes. I think that's in the original one. I need the conclusion. We were left off with him going with Madam Web after he found out that Mary Jane was a clone, and that's trauma. That you know, you know how relationships like I need closure. That's the closure I mm-hmm. need because <laughs> I ain't going to heaven, and God ain't gonna give me you know, the ending that I really mm. wanted out of it. So I need it in my lifetime. <laughs> There's plenty of fan fiction. Fan fiction done that. Go on there, Charles. You'll, you'll find your endings there. <laughs> mm. uh, let's see. So Jenny from Life is a Teenage Robot. Um, I watched some of that. That was, that was all right. Never watched, never saw. Uh, Jimmy Neutron. Of course, you have to have Yeah. That. Yeah, we need Jimbo up he's, in this. Yeah, he's one of the, the, the A-list Nickelodeon characters. Uh, Korra, I didn't really watch the Korra series. I didn't watch it, but I know of it. I know what happens. You know, it's just um, I I watched Avatar the first time during pandemic time, like the first lockdown. Oh, okay. and then you know because I went through three seasons, I'm like all right, I'll get to Korra at some point. But I heard it's good. You know, and then it's not for everybody, but it's good. Lucy from Loud House. I don't. That's that's Never like a current of. show of theirs. That's why I, I don't. Have okay, any. sure. Uh, Nigel. Yeah, I can work with that. Yeah, I can like that. out of all the wild thornberries, he's the best one. He's the funniest yeah. one. He's the you know, the memes, memes when he was relevant, twenty thirteen yeah, with the memes it. guys. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Patrick, I think it was the last one. Uh, Plankton, as well. Raph, all good choices. Yeah, good choices. Raph, Ren Ooh, and Stimpy Leo. is one of the the older school characters. Yeah. Um, that totally. Would not make that show in today's climate. <laughs> well, they would, but not with uh, not with the original creator. <laughs> with the, the, well, the, uh, yeah, no, he's but he's he, he, he's a bad boy. Yeah, that's he, all I gotta he, say. Indeed, indeed, and the art style wouldn't fly <laughs> in today's climate either. Um, I uh, yeah, uh, Reptar because I guess you have to one fair that's rep. So sure, just take a fictional character from that fictional series, uh, Rocco. Cool. <laughs> right. Well, what, what people don't realize is Rocco was a phone sex operator and um Wait, did he work at a comic book shop? No, he did work at a phone sex yeah. hotline. Like there's so many adult jokes in that show, it's ridiculous. Um it's it's in like I rewatched it and I think there was like an episode where like Mrs. Bighead was trying to get him to sleep with her. To make mm-hmm. Mister Mister Bighead jealous, and like I'm like I completely flew over my head, and I'm just like, oh, okay, all righty, SpongeBob, that's your that's your uh, Mario. Yeah, you, you need him. You know, he's a driving force, driving factor. Squidward, and I've already seen the handsome Squidward like Final Smash or whatever that he's got. And, and look, if I will appreciate any any game that has that meta, you know, mm-hmm. meme youth culture that comes into an acknowledgement, yeah. and it's true. And that's yeah. I mean, the and SpongeBob is like the king of memes. Yeah, so. I, I think I have a couple of them that we use in the chat when things go down. And then Zim, because Zim is basically uh, a character that it's not really popular with a lot of people, but there's like a, such a small niche. He's kind of like Ness or whatever. Like you know, those Earthbound fans, we're never going to get a new game. And it's like, well, yeah. yeah. And everybody knew Invader Zim, but they yeah. don't want to tell you yeah, that one it, wasn't good, it, it wasn't a good show. I'm surprised they didn't do like Ah Real Monsters because I remember that being that? Nickelodeon. Yeah, that's true. There, there's some missing stuff here, um, and you, you can. I mean, you can't. They'll never do have this crossover, but you know, have like a third party character, which would be like Doug, because he was well, Nickelodeon and now he's yeah. Disney. 
Disney's Doug was just terrible. That that's it was like, that was a, that was a shit show. That's two for me. That, and, that's and one. I, yeah, that's an appropriate one. D- <laughs> Disney. Yeah, it, it's absolutely. It was fucking terrible. Four. Yeah. Uh, Disney's Doug is basically if you had that childhood friend who went off to college and came back and he was a complete asshole. Five. I mean, it, they, it was just so disappointing. They completely I, neutered it. Do you know how the show was? To be on, was it ABC Kids? Whatever. In yeah. The, like yeah. on Saturday mornings. That's when it was moved to. Do Do you know what the creators like? proper and then they made a movie which was terrible and it was about saving a loch ness monster and i was like he doesn't even get patty but then the ending ending was supposed to be that him and patty were never supposed to be because it was about like first time love i'm like i don't need realism in my cartoons okay Mm. okay only with like anime and they overdo that sometimes with the blood coming out when a person murdered but i need doug to be happy because he's a good guy yeah and then what, what was the first thing disney did they're like we gave the trailer park guy roger a yeah they the made lotto. him like his, ma- his mom won the lottery and yeah. i'm just like i'm like look so now he's an episode- asshole and he's got money yeah there's one episode of the simpsons where barney no longer becomes an alcoholic you do it for a single isolated episode to humble somebody which is probably actually one of the best episodes i've seen of barney uh you know from the simpsons not being an alcoholic because mm-hmm. the simpsons were just so good i fall asleep to it sometimes just mwah, tree yeah, but yeah, they season. ruin roger and skeeter just wasn't skeeter if that makes sense i i i hate that show this is my problem with disney they just destroy they yeah. destroy things <laughs> yeah yeah that was that was uh very disappointing to see like just that show they gave him like longer sleeves and like it was like they try to make him look different it's like uh, yeah uh, just handcuffed the writing staff to kind of make him way more friendlier than yeah, he should have been and, and instead of being real to... real like uh, real life situations right dear journal yeah man's imagination go wild quail man Quail right. Man. I think every guy wants to be Quail Man at some point for Halloween, mm-hmm. but then we realize at 34 and 36. <laughs> well, right? first off, it's going to look weird because the Quail Man suit is just like his regular shirt and shorts, a red cape, and like a belt on his head. Mm-hmm. So you'll look more like a psychopath than anything else that's about to shoot up a place. They don't have no Timmy Turner up in this. You know, I'm on that fairly odd parent craze right now because of being Cosmo. True. That's disappointing. Yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe as a as a dlc character right and, and they don't have his dad jimmy's dad because i think they had him in the first one as DLC. yeah they, they're they're missing some characters from the first one but i think they because now they have voice acting and everything in this one yeah they, they actually have which is appropriate right they, they they've given actual life to this so it might just be a matter of can we get the voice actor to sign yeah. on board for this right and what people don't realize the first one which I, I have for free, but I never touched it. It's just the fact is, if I don't have voice acting, then it's just the Mugen games. If yeah. you remember those, you just download them like an mm-hmm. emulator and you just don't go from whatever and just have fun with it. And we, we need a little diversity. And this looks better than I, I tried the the D, the multiverse game. Yeah, I didn't play it. It was it, first off, you don't have all the characters, so it's mm-hmm. a free to play whatever. Which if you're trying to make a multi universe crossover fighting game, that's like Super Smash Brothers. You need to have access to all the characters. You, yeah. you can't just handcuff everybody and just like, well, you need to pay in order to play as Batman. I'm like, no. That, Batman's that, your main guy. He yeah. should always be there. Yeah, Batman should be your first character out of everything. And I would not want to pay f- to play as LeBron James. You no. know? I think my problem with the DC one is that I really just want all the cast of characters from like Cartoon Network because the cell but shading they, they looks had like them. It. They had do it, I but have... you, it was just a convoluted way of. But, of but do I have it. Sam? But do I have Samurai Jack? Do I have Frylock? Do I have Master hold on, hold on, Shape? Well, let's look. Hold on, let's. Well, yeah, that'd be well, even it, cool if they had like Adult Swim characters. That would have been. Well, cool. their beta alpha is like closed. I ain't coming back to like April, dude. I don't remember reading. And like I said, yeah, we they about... they kind of screwed up in the whole development of that, but. <laughs> And we were I'm talking about it on the show. The yeah. Rest, yeah. Fighting games, you know, they're a dime a dozen, but H1 has a click. You know, it, it, it happens. It's a sector. It's like, what's your favorite Billy Joel generational music? Because he had different personalities. And that, that's how I would kind of equate to it. But I also, and I talked to Francisco about in the group chat, you guys. So we're going to bring up here because we're going to be video, very video game centric. This is what happens when, you know, sports end. Like baseball's over. Okay, World Series. Congrats. I don't care about Texas. No one watched it. No one watched it. All right. <laughs> Oh, Charles, you're just saying that everybody watched. It's a good thing for the small market teams. No, neither team is small. Arizona had money to make. They just yeah, Texas and, and Arizona are not small markets. Yeah, and, well, but that's always what you hear is because in their divisions, sports show, everybody, mm. they're 
outspent by Houston, yeah, except for this year. They're outspent by Houston. They're outspent by the Angels. They're outspent by the Padres. Dodgers. They're outspent by the Dodgers. Mm-hmm. You know, so San so it's like, the, the, yeah, San Francisco. They're not as small market as you guys think. It's just they have nothing to care about. And I, I, I what's the compelling story? They pull the 2009 Yankees on you. Or we just overspend for one year. We're going to get it. We're not going to be beat here next year. I'm sorry. It's the truth. So I'm going to talk about video games over, you know, teams I don't give a fuck about. So that's seven um, or six, six, six. Okay. So the multiverses game had uh, Finn, the human and Jake, the dog from Adventure Time. Fair. They had Batman, Black Adam. And I don't. What? I think it was the. I'm, I'm a. It, it, I think it was. Out of, hold on. No, was no, it the rock no, version? no, no. It's uh, a different voice actor, Bob. Well, no, no. But I, does it look like the Rock? I don't know. I would have to. First see. off, that movie fucking sucked. That was my <laughs> yes, it was. It was. Terrible. You know how I feel about it. I, I, you know, if 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 you know if if you really want to torture somebody, CIA, don't don't put in the the waterboarding, the nail clipping. Make them watch that uh, shitty movie Eight. Uh, multiverses. Black Adam. Let me see what he looks like. It's probably The Rock. You need some kind of brand notoriety, you know, because he doesn't probably look like the. Original. No, no, he doesn't look like the. No, he doesn't look like The Rock. Okay, good. No, no, no. Nothing, nothing wrong with the way The Rock looks. It, he's handsome, and it, unlike his wax sculpture, but it, it's just no. It's it's just Black Adam as he's showing. You know, my favorite thing is how he tries so hard not to be wa- Rock. He was just Dwayne Johnson. He realizes <laughs> the only way he's going to capitalize on it, which makes me love Dave Bautista even more because he was able to keep his name. True, to he's he's been in a few movies that I've even seen. Uh, that he's 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 stretching out his David is chops. the best wrestling actor that's ever been there. Watch him Blade Runner twenty forty nine. You've never seen a miracle, and he was Dax and all the Guardian stuff, and he's great in it. Mm-hmm. He actually wants to be an actor. Wasn't I think The Rock a, wants to be an actor too. In an M Night Shyamalan movie too. Something yeah, like the that? Knock on the Door. Or yeah, something, something like that. that. Yeah, and he was in Dune. That yeah. bad movie. And he was in this movie with that 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 Pakistani comedian Priya, the one that got early swole for yeah. like Elementals or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. That that, that that guy. So he was in the movie with him, like, like was it like an Uber rider or something? I have no idea. Yeah, what it, was called. it was something. It was something. Yeah, right. But, but good yeah, man. something. Anyways, I mean, ride app or something like that. Ride. I have no idea. But anyways, uh, so yeah, Black Adam, Harley Quinn. Uh, yeah. Superman and Wonder Woman. So those are all the DC characters. I could just play Injustice. I'm just saying. Arya <laughs> Stark from Game of Thrones. Sure, I like Arya. Uh, Book wise, Gizmo and Stripe from Gremlins. That's you know what? A for effort on that. Because yeah, you that's think. Nintendo has their like. Oh, it's Rob and you know Ice Climbers and just like, yeah. Hey. These guys only showed up in one or two things, and it's okay. The Iron Giant. Sure. Weird. I, I, when I think multiverse, you think something that spans multiple things, not one movie. Yeah. and Well, well that's it. Well, it's again, like Nintendo. They've, they've got some characters that only showed up in one game or one game series, um, or, like, or one or two game series, whatever. Uh, so, But, yeah, it seems like a, it's always like a cop-out when they use the Iron Giant, I think. It's like, yeah. okay, yeah, we'll give you the Iron Giant, but they'll never use him in okay. a different movie or have a, a different retelling of the Iron Giant, you know? It's just like, yeah, okay. Cool. You know, hey, Vin Diesel was the Iron Giant. Like, okay, yeah, yes. yeah, don't, don't Everybody knows the... Vin Diesel was the Iron Giant. Yeah, don't pull the <laughs> Disney, though. I don't need a live action by WB voice. Because, you know, what, what else do you have? You want to ruin no your childhood story. anymore, Charles? Superman. You, you know, know what the fun story is? I'm going to tell you a fun fact. They'll make, up, they'll make up for all of the ruination of your childhood if they just finish Spider-Man. Yeah, well, I have never watched the Iron Giant. Okay. I know it happens. You just know certain things happen, mm-hmm. but you know, I, I I saw it, but I just don't, I don't recall it. So I just I just remember Superman. That's yeah, it. only three Looney Tunes: Bugs Bunny, Marvin the Martian, and Taz. Is it crazy that you don't have Yosemite Sam of all people or Daffy in a Duck fighting game? Yeah, because with Yosemite you could use the pistols. Like, like I'm just thinking like Bugs and Daffy. Those are the two. Mm-hmm. How, how are you missing Daffy Duck? He's he's got he's arguably just as much range as Bugs Bunny, maybe even more, yeah. right? Um, uh, let's see. This player first games Rain Dog. I don't know who the f that is. I don't know. I don't know Never. if that's like a game series that they own now because WB has Mortal Kombat and all that stuff. None of the Mortal Kombat fighters are in here. Well, got you know. We get enough crossover of that half the time. I know, but you could still have a clean version of like Sub Zero and Scorpion in here. 
Yeah, yeah. that's true. Rick and Morty. Yeah. Uh, voiced yeah. by Justin Roiland. Of course, that's not going to happen no more <laughs> in the future. Well, you know, I, I heard the voices and it's just the same, you know, just the same characters. Yeah, I mean, Sounds you can find people that can mimic voices of, of people at this point. There's there's so much out there. Yeah, not everybody's going to sound like Mel Blanc, guys. He's been dead for like 20 20- Mel well, Blanc, I mean, for those who don't know, is the original voice of almost every, every character that you character love ever heard. before the 1980s. <laughs> um, then you have Velma and Shaggy from Scooby Doo. Appropriate. But not Scooby Doo himself. Yeah, I wouldn't want I wouldn't want Scooby fighting though. We LeBron have... James. Well he had Space Jam. Yeah. So what if, what if you can't get Michael? Come on now. The, the well, ultimate I mean, crossover? Yeah. You could actually have them face each other for the first time I, I, in I was a fighting say, game? I was about to say something mean. The only good <laughs> thing Michael's ever been about, aside from starring in Space Jam, Stanley. is just that you know, well no, because <laughs> Well no, we, we we're not gonna go dark of what I was going to say, but yeah. Well gambling's not dark, right? You, you know Oh no, it's so the consequences. You know, hard rock pay, bets is a good company, it, it, Charles. It's the consequences of not paying your gambling debts. <laughs> um, well Michael Jordan's got enough to pay his debts, don't worry. Yeah, well, you know, you know but, just like anybody else who gambles responsibly with hard rock bets. But I was gonna say the only thing Michael's good at is just basketball. So if you put him in a fighting game, he couldn't do it. There you go. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, you could put Shaq. He was in a fighting game. <laughs> Shaq was also, you know, a genie. It, was Kazam? Wasn't he Steel? W- That's a DC it character. Steel. It was also Steel. Now my question is: Was Kazam under one of the? Um... WB stuff, you know Kazam. Oh, uh, now we it, have to go down the Kazam thing. Well, We're going well, down a rabbit hole, Charles. Yeah, well, it had the greatest. It's sports related. It's Shaq, one of the the, the most notable. And then Steven Universe time. and Garner for Steven Universe, and then Tom and Jerry. Those are the last three characters. Yes, yeah, Tom and Jerry is appropriate. I, I really I watched like two episodes. Of Kazam. Universe. Kazam itself has the greatest scene that even I at thirty four wants when you know he wishes when he wishes for it to rain candy and it does. I'm like, that's my spirit right there. That's probably <laughs> what I would do with GD. I'm like, Mac, I really go for a for a chocolate bar right now full size let's see it had a 20 million dollar budget gross 18.9 million and it was culture eight it was distributed by let's see made by touchstone pictures touchstone isn't wb and distributed by buena vista pictures distribution that's disney yeah okay so kazam is a disney property so if they ever want to revive that Kevin Feig, you know what to do, man. <laughs> put, the, put Shaq in the MCU. <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah. I, listen, I'm not gonna lie. For if they, if they, because the problem with Marvel, it, this is the Josh Whedon problem. They try to be funnier than what they actually are. But, but, hmm. I would go for a Shaq. Shaq won't say no. He says no to nothing. No, he's he's in everything. Shaq yeah, is, he, you know. The general, Papa John's, he'll, he'll do anything if you pay him money. Yeah. So the streets need this now. <laughs> We're at forty four minutes, Charles. So let's talk a little bit about baseball. Just yeah, to round it out. Let's, yeah. We're not gonna talk about the World Series that we didn't watch. No, of course not. But well, I mean we could. Maybe. We could talk about no, we you already talked you already gave a synopsis of the oh, entire there, World there, Series. There's two things I want to talk about on the World Series about it. I think it's hysterical that Jake DeGrom and then Max Scherzer mm. get their first and second rings without actually contributing to the World Series. Yeah. Because that's like the, as a competitor, that's like the ultimate insult that could happen. I mean, I'm just happy that Grom has it because now it just really like validates his Hall of Fame. He was always going anyway, in my opinion, but now there's like nothing you could do, but it's just funny yeah. because right. of the fact of how you got it. Right. And you're like, damn. Yeah, Scherzer and, and Scherzer already got his back in 2019, so that's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it, it's the same. Like, uh, it's the same argument I would make with like Acuna. He didn't get his ring; he was sitting. Yeah, you know, he, like that was that's that's the one thing I can I can hold above him. Like, yeah, your ring is just as fake as as uh, as Degrom's now, right? So, so yeah, uh, let's so, um, yeah, there's baseball. Uh, finalists for everything rookie of the year whatever my, my i got one the, they already gave out the gold gloves I, I what i think only one of the marlins players was nominated for a gold glove and he didn't win it so whatever but uh skip shoemaker for the marlins is the manager of the year so hopefully Fair. he should win but he's going up against 
uh, uh, Brian Snicker of the Braves, but I I'm gonna invalidate his because they don't take into account postseason. But a monkey could have managed that team to 100 wins. A monkey did manage that team to 100. Wins. <laughs> and uh, the other one is Craig Council, the uh, former manager of the Milwaukee Brewers, who has decided to leave for Chicago, the Chicago Cubs in particular, the rival of the Brewers only 90 minutes away, down south. Craig Council, who grew up in Milwaukee, was a Brewers fan growing up, and eventually would become a player for Milwaukee and then eventually become their manager and probably their most successful years since, like, ever. And now he leaves because... Well, the, the Brewers just didn't want to pay up, Charles. They're, they're, they're... And they lie to you, and they'll say they want yeah. to pay up. Yeah, and now their their owner is basically uh, the, the Cavs owner was a Dan Gilbert after LeBron left. He's like he's he, you know what he he, uh, he may have left us or whatever, but well, we left him too. No, no, he no something like that. He he's he's losing us basically. Like he's he's losing our community. You know, Christian Yelich is just like free me. <laughs> well, he did the same thing in Miami, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, this is uh, this is this is fun. This is fun seeing the Brewers fans uh, showing their true colors by uh, the, the, the five of them that are out there. <laughs> yeah, really, the only people who are Brewers fans are people in Milwaukee. Yeah, I've That's, never met anybody who's outside. Yeah. It doesn't have that kind of. It doesn't have that national recognition the way like Green Bay would, right? You right. Because I think that's who you kind of support of. And you know, Green Bay, even with the Aaron Rodgers, you know, the hate I have for Rodgers is not an indictment on the team. The team was very good, so I can understand the national appeal. The Brewers every year is like, you know, to me, and I know this sounds terrible. The only person I always affiliate to being on the Brewers was a uh, Fielder. Fielder, yeah. and I love a good fat guy. Fielder, and technically, CC was on there for a minute. Because you had two fat men just hitting home runs because he was being a pitcher to get there, if I remember yeah. correctly. CC would have been um, Shoei before Shoei. <laughs> oh, I, I don't worry, because when you get to the AL MVP, I'm going to say some stuff. Don't worry. I actually bought some stats on to a petty train that you are ready for. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's, that's what's going on. I... <sighs> like, uh, with, the, with the Milwaukee... Okay, so I already... With Craig Council's nomination... Sure. Like the Brewers were just like I, my buddy's a Cubs fan, so he's over the moon about this. By the way, like the Brewers are uh, really like the you won that division because the Cubs choke and the Cardinals were ass for the first time in like twenty five years. Yeah, it, it felt yeah. like they won that division by default. The Reds had like a month of being actually good and then just kind of returned to being the Reds. Yeah, and the Pirates had like. Like the first month where they were actually good, and then they they, they became the pirates again, right? So, uh, it like it, it it was almost like the twins, like they won their division by default. Yeah, and, and then you know, with, with overpaying Carlos Correa, like like Skip Schumacher had to work with a very broken Marlins lineup that somehow found a way to eke out so many one run victories. It was insane, and. and- and for the people who are crapping on him because he's a Marlon son, you're allowed to kind of defend your your coach. Because if we just gave manager of the year nominations to just the three division leaders, it would be boring. Because that means you guys would have to nominate the Minnesota Twins, you know, uh, manager and that stuff, right? You're allowed to have wild card teams, essentially what I'm saying. Yeah. And, like, he was uh, – he's out there actually trying to take the tarp off. Because the Mets have a shitty grounds crew, five, mm-hmm. and uh, I mean th- this man managed the hell out, of, and he was a first year manager, by the way. Got the team into a wild card spot in his first year with a team that was not projected to make the playoffs at all. So uh, the fact that he got nominated over the Diamondbacks manager, tells uh, us yeah, something. yeah, it does, it does. Yeah. But I think it's also they factor that in because Zono was they they pulled the Tampa Bay Rays syndrome where they were like a, a, the leader in their division for what almost like two thirds of the season until the Dodgers, the Dodgers came out. Up, yeah, yeah. So I think yeah, that kind of lost some, some points just, there. Yeah, yeah. The Marlins who were just kind of like working with everything they had. Yeah, you know, for it. 
So there you go. So that that's my argument for that. So, but uh, the other ones, Charles. Let me go down here. So the the National League MVP is Acuna, Mookie Betts, and Freddie Freeman. I think. Uh, I gotta think go Mookie, but they're gonna go Acuna. They're gonna go Acuna. He's gonna get it. I think Mookie and Freddie are probably gonna eat like cannibalize each other with, with votes because they're both. It's on amazing the that n- them and then the AL MVP uh, candidates have guys on the same team. But I would disagree that the MVP considerations for what was it, Seager and Simeon, whoever they had in there, would even be so, warranted. So the uh, American League MVP is well, two Rangers: Seager, Simeon, and Shohei. Sure. The battle of the mids. <laughs> uh, look, I'm going to make you some contentions here. Uh, here we go. One, first off, we know it's going to be Shohei. He should have won it last year. You you heard me saying it last year, and I, I still bring it into it, but we mm. gave it to Judge because we, all we care about is dingers. But for the body of work, and I brought it up, I got, I got it going, guys. I got it going because, you know, sometimes I actually do think about what I'm going to talk about stat-wise. The momentum that you were giving him of what he was doing as a player was because of him being a dual player. But the minute he got hurt, I would argue that his contention fell under the same argument of last year. of Hey, it could be Vlad Guerrero Jr. It doesn't mean it's a sure thing, right? Because that's all I heard last year. Oh, well, we know it's not going to be Shohei, but it could be Vladdy Jr. instead yeah. of Aaron Judge. So we don't want to give it. I think the problem is with Corey Seager and then Marcus Simeon, it wasn't going from there. But take away the pitching value because what is he on? Because here's the question I want you to ask yourself. You're going to give him – and I know I know all you baseball analysts would shoot me. I acknowledge that. But an opinion is an opinion. It doesn't mean sometimes it's always a right or wrong. It could be stupid. Maybe I have a stupid opinion coming in. Mm. But if your basis of like he could have been – a you know he, he's an MVP because of also what he's doing on pitching. I would venture to you, but could he even be a Cy Young contender and actually get in there where he falls off at ten and five before the, and you have to consider the injury? You don't get to cherry pick, man. I'm sorry, you you don't. If you're gonna say that because he's dual thing, because I'm sure there's other guys who could do it as you're gonna expand, but goes ten and five, three fourteen ERA, um. 18 home runs. He was like, what, on a threshold of like every six games, seven games is when they had him going on with it, you know, playing out mm. into it. Couldn't, like, complete it out. He had 23 game starts into it, 132 innings pitched. I want you, if you're going to vote as MVP, not because he's a dual-way winner, because what did I say last year? If you're going to evaluate him on that from the year he won the MVP because he was pitching decent. And mind you, 314 ERA is fantastic. I, I think, what, Madden – was having him go for the long haul. Then Nevin was only having him going like five innings or so coming from it, um, Mm -hmm. doing it. But I hold back to the contention of what I speak about because I think his MVP year, I have it in front of me, he had nine and two of win losses, 318 with 23 game stars coming into it at 130 um, innings. Last year is when they were overdoing him where he had 166 innings kind of coming into it, but a better ERE at 15 and nine with 233. What I'm saying is that if you're going to add the qualifier of the results of pitching, I say not if you're looking to the MVP because that's what the Cy Young is. It's the same argument I made about why I think Verlander and Kershaw should never have been giving the MVPs all those years ago, even though I was just literally looking at stats ahead of time where one you know, ERA was 177 and the other one was 218 because you, you kind of cherry pick. So you have to look at it objectively – as the hitter and the hitting components. And you could disagree with me. You're allowed to hmm. because there's plenty because that because baseball really isolates a lot of the good potentials because that's what the Golden Glove is, a silver slugger award or the gold uh the slugger and all that yeah, other stuff slugger. that I mm-hmm. yeah so, but that that's what I'm saying is like we isolate so much of what we think you're good at because who's to say and maybe this goes with the Derek Jeter comments that we were making in the group chat who's to say that you you aren't or you shouldn't be an MVP contention if you're an average on the baseline of stats, but defensively as a fieldman or as a relief pitcher or as a starting pitcher, you can't hit those, you know, qualities, right? And I, I think that's what kind of creates the problem because it holds true to what I said. Every year then, every year then, 
Mm. You should be able to be, he should always be the MVP then. And I'm looking at Simeon's stats right now. I don't know if you want to consider this as, as Cy Young giving to the AL East because he has 29 home runs, 276 batting average, 100 RBIs. I think that's fine. I think that's good. I always kind of look at the higher logistics, and I'm just going from Seager um, because there's a point the, that I'm, the, the superior players, pure, just but this, but this is Seager. More in the National League than the American League, if you're looking. Correct. At it. Yeah, and, and but Shohei kind of goes above and beyond everybody else just because, um, because of, he well, does the dual threat, right? Yeah, but because he was look good at, at both, right? He was great yeah. hitter. He was he was in the home run lead, and then you know messed up his arm with Tommy John surgery, and then mm-hmm. his oblique got messed up and he couldn't hit no more. Well, and I'm on baseball reference for anybody who actually wants good stats, whether it be this, basketball, the football reference. They're actually objectively fantastic. But Seager, this is where it gets murky for me, where I'm like, if I was – and this is why they don't cast me votes because I got to rub the dick nine of every project analyst on there. The only person whose dick I'm rubbing 10 is Jeff Passan because I like him um, Mm -hmm. in in, in that concert. But Seager at 33 home runs, 327 batting average, 96 RBIs. You know, I'm like, that's pretty high. And then we get to show it. And the reason why I can't trust, unless I haven't seen the broken analytics of war, is because war is going to factor into pitching. Because Shohei, I think he had 44 home runs. I'm going to get that out there. Well, okay. The one time I'm doing like real stuff and my computer wants that up. And then this season, he had 44 home runs, 304 batting average, 95 RBIs. I'm like, I'm just saying, we've seen that the MVP doesn't have to be the one who gets the most dingers. So I think Seager can make an argument if you take into what his fielding is as a shortstop versus Shohei, who's basically a DH. So there is no defensive component unless you want to go to be like, well, but the pitching kind of replaces it. That, that's really how I want you guys to look at it sometimes because we have to isolate so much in those positions where we've seen – that's what the whole gold gloves for, man. Like mm. Nolan Arenado has had it for like 10 years straight as being the freaking guy – um, coming into it, so well, that's what the silver slugger is there for too, as well. I know, but you, I, I think that's the counter argument for, hit, for just saying. purely hitting standpoint awards. It's mm-hmm. the silver slugger, it, but it's just weird to me because if you have it where if you're going to always pad in, and it's not padding sets, he's actually going out there and doing it. You know what I mean? But then from now on here on until I get another dual threat, it should always be Shohei. And well, they should have given to him last year. Yeah, but, I, I mean, if he's still balling out as a hitter and as a pitcher just doing that, yeah, I think it, you're just thinking of it as, okay, well, he's a pitcher and he fields while he pitches, and then he hits for the rest of it. I think he could make other comparisons. I don't know what other DHs, like pure DHs, have ever been in the MVP race. I'm sure David Ortiz was probably in a few of those, right? I mean, like, technically, Hideki Matsui, I think, got, he was our DH for 2009. Yeah, I mean, he won Rookie of the Year. So, uh-huh. But he actually played in the field too, right? So, so, but here's another question I have because I have to look into this stats. And no one, listen, in baseball, no one really plays except for Mark Simeon, which could be a reason why he got the MVP consideration. How many games did he play? And then Shohei only played 135 games. And I'm bringing up Corey Seager. Hold on, this is this is the only <laughs> time I think I'll be real <laughs> analytical game. because I have to because I have to go against the masses. Mm. That's what it is. I'm like, well, but I, I have to be the contrary. I ha- I am the well, actually meme. Um, that comes into it. Seager played. Oh, no, you know what? I, I kind of shot myself in the foot on that one when I actually oh, saw it. So I guess he only did 119 games. Really? So you know what? Yeah. Man, the American yeah, League was it, weak. American League was yeah, weak. That, that, with, that, okay, with thank you. I'm not the, to, the, the, to, with, like, Shoei does stand above and beyond everybody else with those numbers. So maybe, yeah, I, I guess, yeah, the American League's, yeah, been. I, yeah. I, I mean, I said it already. Like, compared to the National League MVP candidates, it's. it's uh, but the, this is a terrible point that we found out because point kind of made, but also like these are the guys that you're going to give that you can't, you got two thirds of the season in, but you know, baseball's still a long sport. I at, think there, this know. weird, the season was also kind of weird because a lot of like the, the normal superstar players were kind of injured throughout yeah. the season. Like judge, yeah, was injured. judge actually uh, had with all his injuries, 30 home runs. Yeah. Like you judge know, was injured. That. Altuve was injured. But when, when is he never died? Right. So like those, you're missing some of some of the guys that you think in a normal season they play you know 145 150 games like those guys would be well, in this conversation but but here's my question to you then even if because what was the whole importance about war 
right? That's the whole thing that you guys try to sell me on. That war was supposed to be a, a new analytical factor that shows the importance. Even if all things being said, if you're going to give homie Seager 119 games and MVP consideration with Judge, and the only time you're going to hear me defend him for a while, at 106 games, hitting 37 home runs, and yeah, Why the RBIs are low at 75 RBIs, I understand that. Mm. I understand the RBIs might be lower than what you guys like. That just means he was hitting solo bombs right off the bat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, just, just say he, he was he was hitting cleanup because we couldn't hit on that team. Him, t- Glaber, and then Volpe sometimes was kind of like launching it out mm-hmm. it, it, at, at a two sixty seven batting average, but OPS at. 1019 which is really what you look into ops is the combo of on base and slugging so it's really saying it's like damn he was always kind of there on base percentage at 406 not terrible it means like every other game yeah, four tenths of the time, he's the on time. The, yeah so i'm just saying if if you're really gonna look at the numbers and a 13 game difference i felt judge should have been there 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 i got you aaron Alrighty. i got you dog <laughs> cash me, right <laughs> Uh, but, yeah, it's going to be Shohei, and that's fine. But I, I really want you to make that consideration because, for me, the Cy Young, and I'll, I'll leave it at that, and we've had this conversation before, but sometimes the best debates come back. Getting Cy Young means you are the MVP of being a pitcher. Just saying. And I, I think that annoyances came for me. The for, last uh, pitcher to win the MVP and the Should have been uh, Verlander. Oh, Verlander? I, I think- I think Kershaw. it was Verlander, both of them. So okay. uh, Kershaw, I think, got 2015. Verlander, I think, got 2017. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm checking. Oh, I was literally won the MVP in 2017. Remember, that was a whole big thing. Oh yeah, I think. There you go. I think it was, was Kershaw. Player. I think Kershaw was the actual one. Oh, yeah, I, I think, I think you're right. It was. So, I'm, I'm on baseball reference. So he got MVP in 2011. I'm sorry, I'm like five years too out mm-hmm. uh, for Verlander. You could also just give okay. it to Garrett. Cole, right. Just saying. Just, just saying. <laughs> well, uh, let's see. A National League Rookie of the Year, Kodai Senga from the Mets, but man, didn't I, want them. You, uh, James Outman, I, I, I don't even know who this guy is, and Corbin Carroll, yeah. who I think is going to win it anyways. So there you go. Uh, American didn't League do Jack Dick in the uh, t- eleven, I guess, if that's a cursor. It didn't do anything in um, the World Series, right? Uh, well, I mean, it's a rookie. I mean, just for a rookie season. To get when to that's the all you, but that's a when that's all well, you got. They don't add, they don't they don't talk about the postseason with these stuff. Yeah. So. Uh, NL Cy Young because Joe Hay would never get. It. Oh damn, <laughs> uh, Zach Gallen. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he I got, led his teams to the World Series as their ace. Um, didn't was kind of running out of gas by the end of that postseason run, but he played uh, his final game, Game Five. He was actually really good. Um, uh, Blake Snell, who's going to get paid. mm Hmm. So he's... I, I kind of want him, but I don't because I know how that's going to go for us. <laughs> yeah, the I, I could just tell. Get, yeah. Give me a former Ray. <laughs> Logan Webb of the Giants. Okay. That's, yeah. Okay. Sure. And, and then you have uh, the American League Manager of the Year is Kevin Cash, Bruce Bochy, and Brad and Hyde. I think Hyde's going to get it. <laughs> Bochi, yeah, like, yeah. but Hyde's yeah. gonna get it. He's gonna get it for both of us. It had had Bochi won the division, he would have gotten. Yeah. Nah, but even then, in the shadow of uh of what the Baltimore just did, uh, ah, back to the argument that I was making, and it's gonna be. It's not gonna about the division. It's just about like, well, like it the Orioles with no money division. with all that stuff, and and Bo- Bochi was already experienced, and then he's. Handed a well, roster, it matters, worth... it, and this is why Hyatt is going to get it. It doesn't matter division because that's the toughest division in baseball. Yeah, that's true. And then Kevin yeah. Cash, because you know the Rays, they don't have money. And whatever. I, I just, but and I'm annoyed. I, I want it to be known if Andrew does listen to the show. I'm not always trying to stick it to Tampa, but you are a division rival, so I have to kind of actually like objectively go from there, and. It's just always Kevin Cash. Oh, they got like 99 wins. You guys were paraded as thinking you were the next best thing because he was like the first two thirds of the season. It was great. And then you lost it. So that's why I don't even think he should be in contention of it coming into it. If anything, Dusty should have been the other objective to come back from not having the division and to getting it. Because why are we going to award the manager who had it? Because remember, they were on like, they were 20 up, right? On mm-hmm. their division or 10, really. And then they lost it. So why not Dusty, who wins that out as he's retired instead of Kevin Cash? 
please, I would like to hear because the stack. I mean, if you're going to tell me, oh, the, the roster wasn't stacked, well, that's what you have Baltimore for. Well, they and were... if Baltimore was able to win that division, yeah. then why are we making excuses? Okay. Then, uh, rookie very of... passionate today. Very passionate. Let's see. American League Rookie of the Year, Gunnar Henderson from Baltimore, <laughs> Tristan yeah. Casas from Boston, and Tanner Bebe from Cleveland. I don't even I'm, know who Tanner I'm is. I'm fine with. Well, I'm fine with Gunner because I mean I actually have seen the that. Orioles gonna get that, yeah. No, yeah. yeah, he's gonna get it. I thought Adley was. I, I guess Adley doesn't get, Rashman. He doesn't count as a rookie. Or no, no, one he was, was from last up. year, I think. So yeah, but y- y- it's fine. They're they're making their own like '96 Yankees right. here. It's okay. Yeah, we talked about the National League Manager of the Years, and then oh, and then and then the the, the Cy Young, the, the lay it on me, Daddy. Next around there was it November. 14th or something like that or 15th like sometime mm-hmm. next week we might have the side job oh man the the the, the greatest Cole Garrett job. Cole going up against Kevin Gaussman of the Blue Jays and Sonny Gray former Yankee of the Twins I'm so ready for this it, it just feels like they just had to put two names. I, I, let me put this on pause. Let me get my. I got. I got to get the lube ready. Look, I've been using Cobra <laughs> Grip, so I don't have calluses anymore. Um, just for you, Garrett. I think you need to understand how much I love you. But they, they should. You know, I think they just had to put two names in there. Putting two names in there. You know, what I mean, just a. I'm surprised they go with Evaldi. But you know, they had to put two names in there. Put two names in there, guys. Just because it just isn't. You know, they had to make it with a spirit of competition. But you talk about woof domination. And that's not even counting quality starts as a win stat, but <sighs> delicious. It's yeah. what I wanted to be. And, and there's nothing better than a long contract where you finally, because sometimes you have the first good two years, you but some it. players you do hit. have to grow. And, and, I, and I was right. And what do I love the most? Being right. Mm. And just on the money, a little bit on the over, but this is the leader of our clubhouse. Good judge is there to be there, but this is the guy. Captain I've been enamored Cole. with him for years. I, 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 I just can't. And you know what's going to happen because I'm enamored from now. He's going to be absolutely terrible next year or he's going to have the UCL injury and then get Tommy John. And I'm going to cry. I'm going to just like drop my knees in the Walmart. Not to my knowledge. If I, mm. I think he did very early in his career. I mean, it Houston. would have been like, yeah, Houston or Pittsburgh. Yeah. Okay. But it, it's just fantastic. He's so quirky. He's so weird. But he he's he he's what you'll want with mm. you. And He's the only guy that was con- – like, Gleyber Torres, I want him back, but um, I hope we do. All right, let's not screw this up, Cashman. But you needed, like, the com- – not not comic, but the consistent presence, and that's – and plus, we got one of the best memes ever, which was the finger wag. <laughs> I love the finger wag. This is a guy who told Aaron Boone, I'm not fucking coming out, 11, um, when Boone wanted him out uh, yeah. instead of doing the complete game last year. I was like, yeah, you tell Aaron Boone. You tell that clown. You tell him that you're not ringing Barlin Bailey. You're not doing this. I can't wait. Because I will be super nauseous completely. Okay. Well, that should lead us into a word from our non-sponsors. All right, Charles. People, places, things, concepts, what have you we've been enjoying over the last week. So what have you been – I've been starting the last couple of times, Charles. What have you you been enjoying? So I was – and I'm not going to do the hot sauce yet because I'm, I just want to give it like a regular review. It's, we, we lose okay. some stuff talking about it Indeed. on like ba- a baseball being gone. We can actually, this is the fun part of the year for Francisco because we're going to be like basketball is a little bit too early right now and football is hitting its prime. Yeah. So it's hockey. I'm, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm with hockey. Little... I'm just kind of like, I, I, I'm with the Panthers right now. I still got to feel around the rest of the league. Yeah. And, and the cage is going to be short because, you know, we'll talk about crown drill, but, you know, we'll pepper it. But so, y'all know. I'm a lawyer, right? And I had to really like, I was going to do it today, my Don Spuster, but I had to force myself to do it because if not, then there's no thing to talk about. It's not Wendy's, even though we love Wendy's. Wendy's, I have a complaint. Like my chicken breast was extra chewy. Like I had to rip that stuff with mm. my teeth. And I was like, uh, that was disappointing. And I got there at 530. I'm like, guys, this is usually a time to strike. Maybe I had to be there for the six o'clock. But I usually, when I have afternoon court, I don't eat lunch. And I noticed like a couple weeks ago that my stomach was just really bad. I was like, no, I'm hungry. I don't believe in hangry. I think that's just Hollywoodization to make it dramatic. Usually if I'm just hungry, I just eat. If I can't eat, it's not the end of the world. And I understand every girlfriend the past is just yelling at me. Like, you know, I hear it. It's like twice they've channeled it too, but it, it's hangry is a non-existent thing. You get a headache, your stomach gets embarrassing with the noises and you're starving. Hangry is a non-existent thing. I'm sorry. We, we did that to be cute for being mean to somebody. Just saying. However, I noticed that I, I kind of like the lack of energy. And usually if I do eat, sometimes I'll do like a fruit 
salad or I'll just do like a light salad, something like that. I'm going to do it, but I couldn't do it. So the last couple of weeks, man, and I got it today. I forced myself to get today. I want to get today because I think it's like the perfect, I got to go to court. So let me go get a lunch at 1130 just in case I have to go to the back. Because sometimes I can't eat fats and fats, chicken and waffles or JoJo's <laughs> wings before court because, <laughs> you know, it's over. It's done. I made that mistake back last December or January or April or whatever. No, no, it was a couple of weeks ago. So it was like uh, May and I was like, oh no, but what, what you typically eat during lunch is a sandwich, right? And I didn't have any bread in the house or anything like that. So I go to the top quality of my places when I need something, if possible. I cover three counties, sometimes four, if I have to do coverage and stuff like that. But I've been having Jersey Mike's the last couple Tuesdays leading into my court hearings. And today I went, I had their super sub, and man, it was just potent enough to get me going. And we've talked about Speaking Jersey Mike's. Speaking of Danny DeVito, right? And remember, guys, when we do non-sponsors, it could be something that's consistent. Not everything has to be new. I was thinking about doing my my Cobra grips, but let me do another set of deads when I'm coming back from injury, and we'll talk about it. But food is really – not everybody's powerlifting, right? But, you know, we're always eating. And if you want good quality meat, if you want a crap ton of lettuce, if you want fresh veggies, because I got to complain. I had a Publix chicken tender sub on Friday because I texted you or, I was like, or I messaged you. Yeah, they're like, on you know, it was kind of soggy. Mm, the tomatoes weren't like likable. I'm kind of annoyed did you go? a little bit. I went. I ordered online. And I got it in time. You know, the, uh, forget that. If I have the capa- capability to order, yeah, yeah, I got to press. I get press. I'm gonna toast it. Okay. Yeah. yeah maybe some steam it, caught up to it. I don't know. Maybe, but I was like kind of disappointed. But if you like a whole bunch of oil and vinegar, which is appropriate, that's fine as long as it doesn't seep through. Jersey Mike's for you. Yes, it's a little bit more expensive, son. I get that. Like, my regular was like $10. But you can compensate with that by just doing the points. And then you get free subs. I think a couple weeks ago, on my way to court, about three weeks ago, I got a free sub out of it. A free regular sub. So, yeah, I spend my money there. But I deserve quality because, baby, when you die, you don't take your stomach with you. Along with some other things, but I'm not going to advocate for that on the show. Um, Not right now. At least. Goofs at the dark, maybe. But. I always, you know, super sub the club. Whenever we did the WrestleMania spectaculars, I always get their um, their buffalo chicken or their. It's really a chicken Philly, but it's like a buffalo chicken sandwich that they have. You, they have good hot sandwiches. They have good, you know, regular cold subs. You could do a wrap if you wanted, but I think it's kind of weird. Personally speaking, you're weird if you do a wrap for like a deli meat veggie thing, unless you're like allergic to bread, which I get. Um, you always do wrap on chicken tender or something. It's kind of interesting. Their their menu online does not go in numerical order. Yeah, I think they just kind of go because I they have different price ranges. I think, I and I, I think they sequence them. Um, you always get your chips and a soda. You see a lot of people go there. It's always kind of busy, but it's kind of like consistently consistent for me to go there. I think I'm just gonna go there every Tuesday, whether I have court in Martin County or whether I have court in St. Lucie, because I'm trying to save money. We got to pay loans back, guys. What I don't want to do is eat lunch. And yes, I can make a sandwich if I want to. I can go home if I want to, depending where I'm at location. Sometimes I can't. So I want to get something that's in the range of like 7 to $10. And this fits into it because I've been doing a lot of Wawa's. But, you know, when I had to refix my diet, doing salad four days out of the week for two, three weeks was it was miserable because I only get a Cobb salad, right? And I don't want to do that. My other satellite office in Fort Pierce opened up a Chipotle, which is I'll pay the 10 75 for a bowl, but I'm so basic. I'm like, all right, let me just get rice, chicken, and beans. That's it. Or whatever the meat is. I don't go sexy. Thomas E.S. Alice Wine, but I don't like the lettuce from Chipotle. I'm just I'm just saying. It's like it's like forced. It's the same way about uh Pollo Tropical. I don't want the four shredded lettuces either. Please, no, thank you. But I will always take the lettuce on Jersey Mike's. It is my top rankings of the establishment I go to because I have it as Jersey Mike's. I think I have Jamie John's after that because I love their bread. Their yeah. mayo is good too because they just put a crap ton of mayo. I'm like, thank you. Indeed. Their meats leave a little bit of desirability. I like Publix when I want Publix. I love their ultimate. Obviously, I'll eat a chicken tender stuff, but their ultimate is just top tier, especially when it's on sale. And for a dollar, you add bacon. That's how you have not you have not made it in life. You have not kissed <laughs> Jesus until you put a bacon on an ultimate because an ultimate is essentially every ha- ham variation mm-hmm. most known to mankind. So put put the other component of the ham in there with the bacon and you do that. My problem with Publix is I dislike their bread. Seriously, I hate it. It's too hard. I'm like, ah, you know, it does. It, it kind of takes it out. I'm like, eh, it, it just isn't my cup of tea all the time. And when I used to work near a Publix many, many years ago, I would eat it. It was great. But I'm like, eh. And then um, Subway's, you have to cut. Maybe they're meatball marinara. Maybe they're meatball marinara. I think I have Firehouse Subs above it because Firehouse Subs didn't make a good New York steamer because they're, they're Thousand Islands. But that ain't about them. This is about the king, the supreme, the head of the table, the one whose shoulders above, the LOP, the leader of the pack, as I reference myself sometimes regrettably at work. 
of subs and that's jimmy john so jimmy john's love it come back to the well i'll see you next tuesday baby unless i'm in fort pierce and i can't make it unfortunately get you some promo code um danny devito i don't do mike's way i'll do mike's way without the onions but i don't like onions on my sandwich i'm very insecure about how my breath smells i talk to people but i I, i'm never concerned about saying i had jimmy uh not jimmy john's jersey mike's for lunch sponsor us please Mm -hmm. okay all right, Charles. So, um, I mean, for me, uh, yes, I played Alan Wake, but it's it's not gonna be uh, not sponsor. It's it's fun. Uh, okay. We, we, I played through it. It was it was fine and everything like that. Um, I'm, I'm on Super Mario. Why well, I, I should get started on Super Mario Brothers. Uh, Wonder. Now I started it. I started it, but I haven't gotten into it. So we're we're, we're waiting on that. And I, I bought American Nightmare for Alan Wake. Well. Hopefully that was cheap. How much was it for you getting off of Steam or Epic or whatever you call um, it? Like eight bucks. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, eight, eight bucks, bucks is a good price. Yeah, but um, I mean, for me, uh, my non-sponsor is Crush. Hmm. Um, orange soda. Well, no, it's not just their orange soda, Charles. It's something. It's it's the the secret to their sauce. I'm gonna um, peek at this because there's so many things that are crushed. Just crush the wrestler, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, but let me see. Do they have a website? I would think they have a website. Yeah, they do. Okay. So crush. So I don't drink soda much, Charles. No. Yeah. Uh, I, I usually if I they have other flavors. Well, this is where I'm getting at, Charles. This is where I'm getting at. So crush. Like, I, I like to be a good crush, right? I love Keenan and Cal. I love orange soda just as much as the next guy. And, you know, I like a jarrito, the mandarin. Or like I had pineapple over this yeah. weekend. Pineapple's pretty good, yeah. you know? And, and, and uh, you know, I, just, I, just, I like a nice variety of flavors. And, and I don't drink soda much at all. And so I, I don't buy a bottle of Crush. I don't buy a bunch of cans of Crush. I've never seen a can of Crush, to be honest, in my entire life. I've always just seen, um, like, two-liter bottles. Maybe, maybe in like you know the metropolitan areas, like you know New York I or something. Guess. I'm not sure. I've never. I've only seen them in two liter bottles, and that's it. I've never seen cans of Crush before. But they don't just have soda, Charles. They have the secret to the sauce, the flavor for their sodas. What I do have is a soda stream, and when I like to carbonate some of my water. Make. Huh? When sweet hell are you gonna make? Oh, I'm 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 gonna make my own version of Crush and and Crush Charles sells their flavor packets. And you know the little squeezies, you know Mio, that's another company yeah, that does yeah. it. Well, Crush does it too, and I actually like Crush better than Mio. Uh, there's there's a something different about that flavor. Not sure what it is, but it's good. So I buy a nice handy pack of about six different flavors. It's all the ones that you see on the screen, Charles. Comes with orange. Comes with I want, grape. I want that strawberry. Comes with strawberry. Comes with watermelon. And comes with pineapple. And one more comes with lemonade. See, I want that grape too, but I feel like I'll, the alcohol would just hit too quickly. I already know. I already know. I'm a dangerous man. Charlotte would come out for sure on that. Because I can see it now. <laughs> hey, baby, you see this crush in my hand and my lip. I need a crush on my right. It, it's it's a danger. <laughs> but it's good. It's really good. So I, I would I, – they would sell like the orange one, which is their most popular flavor. and just And I just would buy that. But I'm like, they have a variety pack. It comes with six. These things oh are... God, is that like the hot sauce combo? Do we just channel at the same time? Like, I just want to try a whole bunch of Possibly. Stuff. And so the first time, I'm like... <laughs> we, we were we were sauce cycling. That's what we were doing. About uh, about a, a couple weeks ago. Actually, no, a few weeks ago. Because it comes in six packets. And you got to make them last because these things are not cheap. But no. they taste damn good. Uh, I got through the first pack and I was like... All right, I got through the, the strawberry one. Strawberries... One of my favorites. I got through the orange. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm like, Let me try these other ones. Lemonade, I'm not too much because it's a little too tart for me. That's not the pineapple? They have a lemonade? Because I'm just looking at what's on They, they have a lemonade one. And I, they, and they I, have I would just rather one. just get lemonade? Pineapple? Pine- Listen, if you, if you make it crispy, 
I like the pineapple it's, um, as well. And the grape one is fine. Uh, but you know, the watermelon is the one that surprised me out of all of really? them. I really enjoyed the watermelon. I'm not a watermelon guy. I'm not a normally watermelon guy. I can't say I've ever had like anything. like I, I, That's a lie. I know I've had a watermelon soda. And you know, watermelon candies are like the best candy when you think about it. Hey, you ever had a war- oh, airhead or warhead? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not but There's a the variety pack is is pretty damn good so i've got it again and i'm i'm a huge fan of it i got i got my next um batch of uh carbon dioxide uh containers and uh, i've been been carbonating like crazy charles and it's good it's good it, it, it's better than soda because at the very least i don't get the the empty calories right so mm-hmm. so because these things are not they have no calories whatsoever. So I you know, I might pay for it when I'm like seventy. That's fine. But for now if we get if we get to seventy at all. You know but for mean? now but for now, it's pretty darn good. I love it as a nice substitute to soda for sure, without all of the other stuff that soda gives you. And my I, I don't know, it's just really good. It's really good. Just the fact that Crush has these it, it kinda does make me curious to try out the actual soda. To see what corn syrup does to the flavor with that, I'm terrified. If you gave me the grape or the you know strawberry, mm. I don't know. I'll destroy it. My, my, yeah. And then when Charles the is self destructive, yeah. So I, I may have to look into like where like they have these. They have the bottles. I think I've seen the, these like smaller bottles of like just the the orange, and they have a zero sugar version of this. That's I, I swear to God, I feel like Sedanos would have it. Sedanos. Yeah, I, may, I don't know. Maybe. I, Watch it be what? at like Dollar Tree, and we just don't know. Okay. Uh, possibly. Uh, I bet you. Yeah, it'd be like a Dollar Tree, or Dollar General. Watch yeah. them just have randomly have it. But uh, yeah, yeah, three hundred twenty calories for the pineapple flavor for this bottle. Twenty. <laughs> Jesus Christ! What? Yeah, that's why I buy the flavor packets what, and just do it myself. What's the sugar and carb intake? That is one hundred and ten of sodium. 86 carbs, 85 grams of sugar. That is not good. And some diabetes for you, Charles. Yeah, that, that is beyond your normal yeah. that you get from a two. Like, I I <laughs> tend to, when I go for the Wawa's, I, I will tend to get, like, if I get a sandwich, I get the best thing that you can get for a dollar, which is the Arnold Palmer's, right? Holy you crap. know, go from there. I love Arnold Palmer. Um, Really? Wow. Yeah. That's like, dangerous. None of these are you have no particularly teeth at the safe. End of it. Uh, none of these are particularly safe. I think uh, they do have a zero sugar version. There's can't be. You're and just, you're just telling me lies. Yeah, right now. they're all like at least 75 grams of sugar to start. <sighs> yeah, the pineapple is the worst one, actually. I, I would imagine. So, I, but but their flavor packets are good, Charles. We're, we're not talking about their soda. Yeah, but you, but here's the thing. Let's not tell lies here. We know me. One time. Mm. One time, the the bullets I have taken for this show, <laughs> when I had the nacho burger from Wendy's, not that good. When I had the uh, hot Cheeto or the Cheeto uh, chicken burger from KFC, enjoyable. I had the KFC chicken nuggets I told you about. I never did a spotlight of it because I didn't feel like it needed to be a non-sponsor, but, you know, good quality. Um, whatever the weird Whopper I had, what, a couple weeks ago that we yeah, did the live review pepper. on? The ghost pepper, surprisingly good. Apparently, ghost pepper is like my craze now, and so it's gonna. I'll, 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 when we get to the ghost pepper review today, I'll, I'll tell you more about the story. But you know, one time, one time, I would contemplate the grape or the uh, strawberry. Mm. I might not. I might be like a new kind of high, you know. But I'll, I'll be ready. Okay. All right. So yeah, uh, a promo code, uh, not diabetes. <laughs> A live went to Wilbur, uh, Wilbur Brimfley. That's what you could say. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, let's see. We're at 124, Charles. Uh, I, I don't really have much to, to talk about with regards to the hockey stuff. Uh, j- just as far as the safety precautions, uh, the, the WHL, the Western Hockey League, which is part of the Canadian Hockey League, the, the major junior circuit, that's like the uh, – Young young men like eight, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 years old, they're mm-hmm. they're mandating neck guards now. So it's starting to happen. 
Uh, so that that was quicker than I thought. There's some players already that are choosing to wear them at the very least during practice. So it, it's 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 little by little we'll start seeing net guards become a little bit more norm. Now WHL is doing it mandatory. I'm sure the other um, major junior circuits are going to follow suit and just have like a whole thing with the Canadian Hockey League. I don't know what the NCAA is going to do. Uh, or the 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 under um, like the the IHF if they're gonna require that for for some things as well uh, and eventually we'll see if it if it makes it on over to the NHL but yeah yeah it's uh, I, I I don't know if any of any of the premier uh, professional leagues in other countries if they if any of them have any mandates to her I'm sure the one that's in England or the, the United Kingdom may start mandating it after what happened. But, um, yeah, that's where we're at with hockey. And uh, the, San Jose, the San Jose Sharks are terrible. <laughs> uh, they they didn't win a game in October, and they're yeah. just an awful hockey team. And the Vegas Golden Knights are awesome. And, and the Boston Bruins are also starting off hot, just like they did last season. But what good is it if you don't replicate that in the playoffs? True. And that's where we're at right now. Everybody else is just kind of middling. You have some surprise. Detroit Red Wings had a nice start to the season. The Pittsburgh Penguins kind of started off pretty slow, but uh, what they're the oldest team in hockey, and I, uh, I can't foresee them being that bad anyways, unless they are not healthy, which is what I'd said before the season started. And uh, my Panthers uh, are kind of, kind of, kind of there. They're kind of there as long as I. Th- Once again, I think as long as they they kind of hovered at or just slightly above 500 and then get our uh, defensemen back in Montour and, and Ekblad will be good. Unfortunately, Sam Bennett is gone. He got injured this first game back, and I don't know when or if he's coming back for the rest of this season, which sucks. And, uh, yeah, yeah, Sam Reinhardt's pretty good. And, yeah, that's that's my hockey stuff. I, I can't really say anything else. My my hockey updates because we're trying to grow me a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. We're trying to flower me. We're planting seeds. I haven't watched any in a bit. I, I watched a little bit of the Rangers. And I forgot who they're going against Rangers, and I think it was the Capitals. If it was last week or early in the week. If it's um, on ESPN, it's probably a game like that. Yeah. Yeah, and I remember just putting on Hulu and trying. I was just a, a second too early because it was the pre-show game but it gave you some good knowledge learning some names my other hockey variations looking to see when nhl 24 is going to go on sale mm-hmm. you know black friday sorry andrew but it's happening because you know i can't play wwe or sifu all the time during the show and this is a good way to learn it and i just cleared out like man i made like 300 gigabytes of free time of or spacing up freeing up the space in my hard drive and i'm on like episode two of season two of shorty so that's my hockey updates of the no show league yeah. so there, there you go yeah Okay, so that's uh, okay. We have one one twenty eight NBA Charles. Uh, the, I'm ready. Uh, well, the end season tournament started. I don't know if you even know what the heck it is. I know that the Heat are actually good at it, so suck it. <laughs> we have one win. So suck it. Suck it. Hang the uh, man. I, I can't even imagine the banner for that because I would assume Pat Riley is thinking this is all bullshit. Six. Pat would be like, burn it. <laughs> <laughs> like they'll they'll have like a blurb up there somewhere, but we ain't the Tampa Bay Rays. We don't, uh, you know, we don't uh, celebrate midness. <laughs> so, did they they did the one with the wild card, right? Or am I getting confused? I could have sworn they. Did. I mean, the, the the Rays have them for wild card appearances. There you go. Teams, so, but uh, yeah, yeah, I I doubt the Heat. If if they do win it, it won't be like the big giant th- ones that they have for their actual championships. Yeah. It'll probably just be like tiny, <laughs> you know, you gotta half do it for the, the size. Market. Yeah, you do it for the marketability. We are three and four now. When everybody was already talking that ish of literally, you lose two games. Oh, this is the worst team ever. I'm like. Jimmy was gone for like two of them. I swear the heat. Bam was gone for one of them. Why do we, people out of hate all us the so fan, much? Well, out of all the fan, well, it's not just the other people. It's the other. It's our own fan base too. At the, it's Miami. It, it, like I, I don't. It, it's the worst out of all the fan base. I, I, I talk a lot of shit, uh, seven, uh, about Dolphins fans and Hurricanes fans. Heat are the worst. Because this generation yeah. was born only into the winning time, so they they, they don't know how to hate to lose. Entitled. They don't know how to hate to lose. Entitled, 
yeah. completely entitled. Yeah. Right. Because that's the thing. You got to remember, you know, they were like the ones who were like in their early 20s now were like five, six, seven, yeah. eight, nine coming into the LeBron era, which was yeah. arguably a fun time. Talk to me when you remember Ray for Alston. Yeah. Rest or in even, peace. He's dead, right? Yeah, I believe so. <laughs> Jesus. I, I will check it. If not, you know, it might I be think one he's of those. Dead. Uh, I think Ray for Alston is dead. So it's one of those. Uh, uh, I gotta well, look this up now. Well, <laughs> he is alive. Oh, who's died? Someone died. Someone from from that era of the Miami Heat is dead. Well, he did. He ain't, he not dead. He alive. Ray Frost is alive. <laughs> Player I remember to forget. Yeah, um, maybe we had to bring that back and also remember. <laughs> Someone is him. dead. Is Eddie Jones isn't dead, right? He's not dead. No, no he's just fat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Okay, who's dead? Who's right, so dead Miami from that? Heat dead. Darrell Wright is he dead? No. Somebody Response. from someone who played on that Heat team from like oh three oh four or whatever is dead. I, I remember what is this like a, a Bears to Bears thing? Yeah. Where no. like I I I remember somebody dying and and nobody else I mean, did. We call that like you know Mandela effect. Am I an Alan mean? Wake? Am I writing a story? Maybe I mean like I mean we were always concerned about Chris Bosh, um, <laughs> Razul my... Butler. Razul Butler. Okay, see, I, I didn't I... even know Razul Butler died. I yes, mean, there we and go, was... man. Rafer Razul, I was close. I was close. I... Rest in peace, to Razul Butler and Rafer. Also, may may you be may you be healthy. <laughs> yeah, please. We, and we, Eddie we, Jones we, as well. Okay, he died in 2018. Okay, I wasn't that far off. Wasn't no, that you, far off. You, you weren't, but like I, I, I don't know, you know. Okay, nah, I'm I'm trying to see if Eddie Jones is still fat. <laughs> James Jones in it. Um, yeah, James, James Jones just he just you know he he's just stealing candy for people. <laughs> um, okay, well, as you do this, I'm just gonna take a. Uh, anyways, that's the in season tournament, and I guess the Heat are in it, and they're in a division with like the Bucks or whatever or group, whatever they call it, and it's gonna be like every other Friday or Wednesday or something like that. There's no NBA games on today, which is weird. Election day. Election day. Oh yeah! Ooh, I did not vote. <laughs> How did I know? And I have the open like I don't vote. I, rule. Well, I, yeah, but also I'm not as politically active as uh as andrew right andrew's the one that's that's pushing you oh uh, man so and, and this is gonna be a weird to this is gonna be a weird show today you guys but um you know andrew always tells us that enact our civil rights duty or, or not just civil rights but enact our you know constitutional rights I, yeah i can't think right now to go and vote and francisco will at least be like give the go around and then i'm like nah Nah. Even when the Trump administration, I'm like, nah. <laughs> He's like, but Charles, you're this. I'm like, nah. <laughs> it's fantastic. So for those who do wish to vote, go vote. It's already late now. It's too late now, yeah. Ass. But, you know, and for those who don't want to vote because you think all the candidates suck, you're entitled to. It's okay. I will support you. <laughs> Someone's like, are you libertarian on that? I'm like, no. I think actually libertarians are fucking obnoxious sometimes. Um, 12, 12, 12. Yeah. Um, it can't be as bad as everybody else, but it's cute. But, yeah, that's the reason probably why that there's no games. Okay. All right, that yeah, all right. So now, now I remember why. Uh, okay. Well, uh, yeah. So the, there you go. And uh, so that's the NBA in season tournament. But the, Charles is also kind of kind of stroking himself to the the plight of the Portland Trailblazers. So I, I put it. You know, my you might see me as the most whitest guy you've ever met. My voice sounds very white, but the fury I bring on revenge. <laughs> channels all hispania out there <laughs> from north central and south america and all the islands in between i got you know along with the spirits of every person down in hialeah and aventura we got the <laughs> candles out and everything because what is this nba season pain maker tour revenge pain maker tour 2023 we thought we would never see another pain maker tour we thought it was gonna be enough of me being over dramatic with the Houston Astros when they were found to be cheating, right? Because the Yankees mm-hmm. were the better team in that uh, that year. I could have sworn. Yeah, I could have sworn. But, you know, all that being said, I don't like to carry rage in my heart. You know, not even my fist. I'm a, you know, I, I get too crazy as it is sometimes. But 
for those who have been listening to the last several weeks and months. I hate Joe Cronin. I have to say of Oregon. I, I do not care for anything positive. The Portland Trailblazers, mm-hmm. you know, until Joe Cronin's no longer in charge. After that, it's all fine and dandy. I don't care. You know, I don't hold grudges forever. But you got to hold grudge. Yeah, grudges have to mean something if you hold it for a good period of time. And boy, howdy, thy vengeance how came in and struck hard. Because what was my biggest complaint about everything that happened that Joe Cronin did with Portland Trailblazers and Dame's non-trade of Miami going to Milwaukee? I know beef with Milwaukee. Yeah, get the best player, right? Mm-hmm. I hated the fact that the NBA was kind of like resisting the opportunity that a NBA finals team was trying to get that much. Because there, there was that collusion. Well, I know how I want to know it was a collusion because it was not a one-to-one trade between the Bucks and – um. Mm-hmm. You know, Portland. They yeah. had to get a lot of people. It ended up becoming a four yeah, team trade. Yeah, Phoenix. In the end, Phoenix and Boston. Mm-hmm. Where was that love? You guys could have got a lot of the same people, if not all the same people, minus, obviously, you know, um, yeah, y'all can't. I don't want Drew Holiday. You can keep him. But all that didn't happen. So who did they end up receiving? DeAndre Iden, Robert Williams. Very similar skill sets, whatever Chauncey and his, like, oh, I'm Mr. Big Shot from 2004, 2005, like my balls. Whatever you want to <laughs> do, you know, coming from it. Screw you, Chauncey. You suck. I said it. You're better as an analyst and you're a coach, but you missed the point there, bud. I never wish ill on a player. I actually don't mind DeAndre. Iden. I don't mind Robert Williams, even though I always thought he got underplayed in Boston, both by a Stevens, Udoku, and, um, the newest guy whose name just escapes me right now, Missoula. Uh, mm. But when you go all in, when you mess with the Hispanic powers, you know, just like Ramsey's firstborn getting taken out when, uh, you know, we were trying to, when, when what was it? It wasn't no one Moses. was Moses trying to split it out, right? I'm, yeah, I'm not. When Moses trying to split it out, so comes Paymaker Tour. And now, fortunately, Robert Williams III is out for the season, or is said to be out for the season. So that's person number one God. Mm. Person number one guy. So ideally, what you got it was Iden Williams and a whole bunch of draft picks. Yeah. Because everybody else is elsewhere on different teams, right? And DeAndre's hurt also, right? Yeah, I, I think, or he's just yeah. coming into a slow start. Yeah, or, but he was he was he's out. Oh, no, he he was hurt as well as he's only averaging like two or three points a game per game or something like that. <laughs> yeah. So Iden right now is. Just having trouble with the chemistry. That's okay. What it is. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if he's hurt or not, but I'm just going on a quick, quick thing. It's right? a huge drop know, off like... going from Phoenix that can hide all your mistakes and everything like that, and then. Oh, but but sometimes you know it is hard, and we go with basketball here. It is hard to kind of sometimes facilitate. And Aiden was offense. a high draft pick. He was like a number two, right? Yeah. No. I, yeah. He he was or two or he three was overall. Two. He he was three. I'm thinking between him and Booker. But I think Booker was two, and he, Iden was the four. It was one of those. It was either or. Really. High high top five draft pick. Yeah. Well, the thing is, it's very hard to run an offense directly with a center as your number one because Jokic can do all three factors of vision, which is passing, scoring, and rebounding. Iden is really just kind of like you know Mr. Double Double, but it's going to be a low end double double of the points, which is fine. That's the game plan. But if you have Chauncey Billups who I'm almost certain does not know how to not do an offensive game plan if it doesn't involve guards, right? He never, Chauncey never like, but yet assistant guards. coached anywhere, right? No, he no, just no, went no, from no. like the broadcast the booth and then yeah, Ugh. yeah. It, but that happens a lot in the NBA, like a lot. But it could be, it could be worse. You have Doc Rivers as your coach, right? He'll come, he'll come back, but, but now Doc, he's not. But Doc like cut his teeth. Early yeah, on, you know, yeah, they pay their as, as the coach, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, at the very least, does, does it for like a season or two, and then you know well, goes I mean, to TV and then gets his own whatever. I, like, I don't yeah. know. But Nick Nurse, though, is the prime example. Before he was Toronto, he was um, Dwayne Casey's understudy. He was an assistant coach. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, what's his name? Just kind of came up, and that was it. I don't think it was an assistant uh, for Billis. But that's the whole point. So now you have a bad coach who really has to do something with Shaden Sharp, has to figure out Jeremiah Grant and how, you know, you have to justify that contract. You have to Scoot Henderson who's not doing anything out of it, right? Good luck. But this is this is what it is. You have to go all in. You have to you have to you have to snuff the firstborns apparently. And that's the energy we're bringing. And you know, yeah, I don't want to say call me Moses because I feel like Andrew's having an anxiety attack if I said that, but paymaker tours for real. You know, and I've already been there because it's not enough they have low expectations, but you never want the players to suffer. But what you want to do is have the fans lose faith because it is an obvious rebuild. But the whole thing is you're going to be like, you know what? 
damn, maybe we should have done something with it because X, Y, Z. And if it involves bad management and bad upper operational management, I'm all for it. Paymaker Tour is legit, and I will not let it go for this season. We'll see how I go next season. I was pretty cool about Jokic and his whole thing, but yeah, Paris Oloferis mm. after one season, where I'm like, yeah, you know, it's objectively great. I thought he should have been MVP last year, but the problem is, is that they can't do three piece for some reason, and they give it to Embiid, who was like, mm. okay, but didn't your team? I understand regular season where I do feel like basketball does t- take in consideration um, the postseason though. Where, like, didn't didn't your team just kind of like drop it out and give let uh, you know Boston come back? But I digress. Also, James Harden is starting tonight or was starting tomorrow? It started yesterday. Well, he, he play, yeah, he played his first game with LA. Yeah. They lost. Yeah. Um, yeah that's going to be a, a continuous thing. Don't mm-hmm. worry. Because you have nobody who wants to be the final shot there. And have all the people, it's just going to be like Paul George. Like, I, I guess I'll do it. Paul George at least understands the expectations of just having to be mid. And it's okay. Yeah, and no ill will to Robert Williams the third sucks for him. Yeah, yeah. I, we're we're not here to celebrate injury. I didn't right. even celebrate, celebrate when Aaron Rodgers got injured. Yeah. More on that in a few mm. conspiracy um, theories. I I kind of love Levitard <laughs> for just being <laughs> that for a sec because like uh, yeah, I mean he probably has it, but I think it's just to kind of keep people invested that he did. Oh damn, they got whooped by the Knicks of all people. How is Tom Thibodeau? We don't take basketball seriously this early because, you know, it's all rigged and it's like, whose line is it anyway? Everything's made up and it doesn't matter. <laughs> so Harden went six and nine with 17 points with a plus minus of 18. And I don't know how much, sta- how much, you know, clout you give the plus minuses on the board, because I understand it's like the idea that the offense, there's turnover, not moving well, or you're missing shots. I, I can never tell you. Like I know when it's a vision test thing for me, but we'll see. You know, good luck. Good luck to mm. Tyron Lou because I don't think if he can make anything some balance with what they have, I think he's out seas. Yeah, they're gonna want somebody coming in with uh, some a new head coach, some clout maybe, or something like that, and just uh, open up their new arena next year. Yeah. Okay, well, I think that's it. That's the NBA. We're gonna talk about hockey, baseball. Uh, we're just gonna petty, petty train. We're at one hour and forty two minutes, and then we can perfect head over to wrestling and then call it, Charles. So let's go. Mm-hmm. So the NFL, we're in week nine. We're already at the halfway point of the season. So we can properly gauge some teams now, Charles. Yeah. Who's in, who's out, who's taken, who's contending. Uh, so uh, your team started off this week, Charles. Mm. Your beloved Titans. Losing mm. to the Steelers. The Steelers finding ways to win. <laughs> As always, Mike Tomlin will never have a losing record. Mm. And uh, has the new era started, Charles? It is because Sand Hill's eventually being benched to the backup. And I'm happy with it because I have now seen two games that will leave us. I watched all of Thursday's game because right now I feel like it's a house money run. Could we go on a run? Sure. Are we getting the AFC South? I don't know. Probably not. But it doesn't really – being division leader doesn't matter anymore when you have teams that can get the wild card, right? And yeah, hot. Yeah, and like the whole Kevin Byard situation of him being traded a couple of weeks ago doesn't matter because, you know, if our defense is playing fine. But what I saw was Will Levis, who, like, you know, he, he, he was known for the drafts so for putting mayonnaise in the coffee as a gag. Well, he made me release some mayonnaise because <laughs> he makes throws that we have not had a quarterback make in like six years. He makes throws that Tannehill can't make. He can't make those throws. Mm. I, I like Tenny. I like his time with us. I, when we traded for him, a seventh rounder, to get Mariota, I was like, this is better than what we have because Mariota was good, but hopefully, you know, he was a playmaker, not a passer, right? But the problem was is that he was always injured. And when you have to deal with possibly Logan Woodside as your backup, you're like terrified. And when you were, we had Zach Menenberger having a starting game, guys. I'm bringing like real people here. You know, the, the history of the times of what I've been able to see the throw, but Levis has moxie he um can make all the throws kind of accurate yes he had a pick it was on a you know like a throwaway like we need to win this in the end zone kind of gig and it happens right because you're down because your defense just couldn't hold the line because for whatever reason kenny pickett just succeeds been terrorizing everybody in college rather watch him play and now we have to see him in the pros he won't be set for long the fan base hates him even though they're like five and three how do they figure out the win derrick henry did what derrick henry could leave us to hopkins at least got hopkins for another year this is just really just to have fun with it we're, we're i think the energy i would channel is like let's just be the team that no one wants to play during the regular season plain mm-hmm. and simple and if you've carried that but he he's making all the throws he um he makes throws that 
Tannehill can't make. He's making throws that Mariota can make in his professional thing. Mariota in Oregon was amazing for anybody watching. Making throws that Matt Hasselback can do. Making throws that Fitzpatrick could do because he was a gunslinger, but more accurate. And I know this is based off the of two games. Sometimes you just need to see one game. That's it, right? Because there was a lot of bad quarterback play this week. And don't worry, the Patriots going to take you there. Choo Choo Charlie is going to help you, and mm. you know Cisco Conductor is going to help us out. Or Conductor Cisco is going to be there. Um, mm. But and you know what? With every quarterback you have, I'm going to tell you if I've seen that, if Levis is better or not for this week's of the Petty Train. But he was making those throws. You know, I mentioned Logan on the side. I mentioned Josh Dobbs couldn't make those throws. And he just won it. But Josh Dobbs is the reason why we sucked. So, if anything, I think we did it right in the quarterback position because Tannehill's contract to be up next year. This year, he deserves to be a bridge starter or contest with somebody. So, let him go elsewhere, right? Malik Wills is a third, uh, third round pick. He could be a bit developmental. And we can see because we're not throwing out names like Tommy DeVito. We're not throwing out names like. You know, Aiden O'Connell, even though the Raiders won their game, remember O'Connell's been there before and hasn't come out with it. We're not having to rely on, you know, picking up Brett Rippian for the practice squad to go start for our team. We're doing it right. And I'm already in the better luck next year mindset, but sometimes there's enjoyability of being seven and nine, or in this case, seven and 10 versus, you know, because the expectations are kind of low. So I'm happy with it. Regarding Pittsburgh, Mike Tom was just so damn good, man. He's just such a good coach. Like I, it amazes me how he never gets coach of the year, even after last year. And I forgot who got it last year, but when you really see what he does and he just doesn't uh, lose. Are, are the, are the Rooney's the, the Mickey Arison of the NFL where it's like, they don't really want to spend, but, because they have such a good coach, it kind of masks everything. Well, but I don't think it's that. It was Brian Dable, who shouldn't have had it because, look, everything's gone to shit now, mm. 13. And I don't even think they were that good last year because they were stalling out. I think it should have been Tom if you're calling a regular season um, award. But it's not that they spend it. It's just they just didn't pick the right guy. Okay. It. I feel like Alrighty. it's safe to say Najee Harris is a bad draft pick for that status at a first rounder. But they got TJ Watt. They paid him. They'll pay, you know, they paid out um, Deontay Johnson. It's a good constructive team. Matt Canada is not a good offensive coordinator, but, mm. you know, whatever. You win games. So whether it's by three points or by, you know, 30, as long as you win. I, I, so I can't say that about the Roomies. I can't say that about them. Okay. I'll defend them. All right. So next one, uh, this episode is titled Fraud for Charles. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, just like the the allies waltzing into berlin we they they, they sussed out the frauds in germany <laughs> yep <laughs> the kansas city chiefs were the allies and the... <laughs> i'll start the analogy right there uh the miami dolphins man this team cannot beat an actual team i don't care what excuses you have for that well the defense was good still gave up 21 points in the first half and the chiefs were on garbage time after that yeah Oh, they're 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 tired. They don't have a center. You can't can't snap the you do you can't snap the ball. You, you, I, I saw the snap. All right, Tua Tango Vailoa has T Rex arms. We all know this. He he went really like low. Yeah. on that. Yeah, T, t, t for t, 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 the T Rex sounds for Tua T Rex arms Vailoa. Okay, and had the opportunity to try and tie the game and possibly win it with like a two-point conversion or whatever if they wanted to they, they screwed up at the end and i you can throw out every excuse but so far three games three losses to the bills who yes you can make some arguments that the bills aren't as good as they were last year but they're just oh, inconsistent they're, they're fucking garbage 14. They're, they're, they're an inconsistent team that's that has talent they just have they're just weirdly inconsistent and have some garbage decision making and all kinds of stuff, but they're still considered at the very least consensus wise a a playoff contender will probably get in as a wild card. Yeah. Fair. There. And and if they might they might just figure everything out at the right time, let the Dolphins win the division and, and have fun with that and then show them to be frauds later on. Well, they're frauds now, I'll tell you that much. Will Levis the is not better than Mahomes, but Will Levis maybe, hmm. maybe can make some throws that Tua cannot make because that underthrow. I think it was a <laughs> schematic mess up. Well, that that is true, but it, it's fun to see the memes. Yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> it's fun to see the memes. Everybody's showing 
once again, that Tua can't make the deep throw. That's always fun to see. Yes, and I do enjoy seeing the Dolphins lose and seeing the Dolphins win. I get it. I'm the Grinch. That's the whole point of this. But the Dolphins mm-hmm. have converted me to this. The Grinch didn't start off as a meanie at first. No, he was converted. Y'all saw the the was it the Ron Howard movie, the origin story. All mm-hmm. right, people. The Dolphins treated me like shit, and I became an ordinary green creature on top of a mountain. So yeah, the Dolphins are frauds. They can't beat actual real teams. Their schedule does have like the Dallas Cowboys and a few other contenders out there. And if they start da- losing, Dallas teams, is arguably a fraud as well. Well, well it'll later. be the fraud bowl then when they do face them. Uh, the Dolphins, I think, also play the Ravens as well this season. Uh, we could have beaten them, and then we didn't. So we'll see. But the Dolphins have yet to beat an actual team. So until they do, and I told this to Doug because he texted me during the game, but now that he's back in the U.S., uh, <laughs> I-, I told him this this team, you know, they're frauds to me until they can prove otherwise. And that, the only way they could prove that is if they actually make it past the first round in the playoffs. Anyways, let's keep going with the other games, Charles. The uh, uh, the Vikings beat the Falcons. Man. I got to tell you. Good mm. for Josh Dobbs. Arthur Smith should not have a job. Plain and simple. Mm. If you lose to someone that was literally just signed, and mind you, Arthur Smith's our former offensive coordinator if you lose to somebody who just got signed right Mm -hmm. like four days in and you're just stuck with like the whole heads and clown not giving the ball to anybody running on the fact that statistically you guys are the best defense when it doesn't show it oof oof yeah will levis is better than both low brain and taylor henneke i like henneke (laughs) but still better yeah and yeah the vikings hey they're back above 500 Look at that. Salvaging the season. Kinda kinda want that to happen, right? Kinda it has that Case Keenum vibe of the Vikings where somehow Josh Dobbs just links up with Justin Jefferson and they get past like the Saints in the first round of the um NFC wildcard game or something. Give it yeah. to me. I need it. Speaking of the Saints, they beat the Bears twenty four to seventeen. And they're five and four. That's not even an accomplishment. My buddy's a Saints fan. He's like, Ah, I hate Dennis Allen, but I'll take these wins. I'm like, Yeah, fair. <laughs> yeah. Their card is at a solid game. Yeah. All I mean, right. they, they, they just are an uninspiring team. We'll leave us as better than Derek Carr. And, uh, but it's the NFC Tyson South, Agnet. so they can. it's a winnable division. Mm-hmm. All right. The Packers spanked the Rams 20 to 3. We'll leave us as better than Brett Rippian and maybe <laughs> Jordan Love. The new era is Charles telling which quarterbacks are worse than will Lewis. Just, just just for this week. Mm. But we'll see, you know, because Lewis can have a crap game soon. Yeah. And it's Alrighty. probably gonna happen. Okay. The Commanders beat the Patriots. Lewis is better than uh Mac Jones. Mm. He can make them deep Already. balls. The Sam white Howell, bread is sure. gone. It's been tossed. It's moldy. Yeah, it's fine. You know, can't can't eat the same brand. You know, we, <laughs> we can't do wonder bread forever, kids. Mm-hmm. Got that butter bread now. Mm-hmm. Okay, then the Ravens spanked the Seahawks. Well, Levis is not better than either of those quarterbacks. <laughs> okay, all it's right. Spanked thirty to three, right? Thirty-seven to three. Oh God. Yeah. But OBJ is going to go and celebrating getting a touchdown from Tyler Huntley. I mean, it's fine because they have the cap space for him for a one-year seventeen million, and I'm still butt hurt over OBJ being drafted on my fantasy team and then tearing his knee. But yet I had Justin Jefferson that rookie season and I picked, I drafted him because I, mm-hmm. I was like, I was like, this boy was good. Now let's see if he made Joe Burrow, Joe Burrow. Mm-hmm. I was like, we're going to get him. And you know, sometimes the payoffs to be right. You have to be calculating, but I'm still kind of salty OBJ. Just saying the Houston Texans beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, Will Levis is Not. maybe better than Baker. Okay. But- All right. CJ Stroud's so good. <laughs> that, that, they've done it well with Houston, we though, because it's it's a whole new thing. You're, you're collecting a lot of the same wide receivers from last year, but this goes to show that sometimes it's not about adding more. It's about just adding the right play callers because, you know, um, Tank Dell, I believe, was there last year. John Mitchie just came back from fighting cancer. 
Noah Brown, I think is their tight end. Del- uh, I think Dalton Schultz is there. You know, and obviously C.J. Stroud, and you know the Panthers like because Bryce Young can still have the, there's there's a different cast of quality with you know what is going on in Houston versus Panthers. Frank Reich is questionable. Mm-hmm. What they have with um the head coach of the Texans, and I can't believe I forget his name right now because we we were like loving him so much. D'Amico Ryan's when he was a defensive coordinator in San Francisco, but. Sometimes it's just about getting the right kind of scripting and playing and going mm. from there. And then sometimes you're also the benefit of the team that you play as well. But it's still amazing. What, the five touchdowns, 470 yards? Yeah. Yeah. And I like mm. I, Houston's I, 500. I like, yeah. I, I liked, I liked Stroud, what he was doing in Houston's 500. It makes the AFC South interesting because it just feels like the AFC uh, or the AL East were just like, I don't know if any of these teams are going to be good perennially every year. But that's the fun of it if you like the sport. Mm. And that's the thing sometimes about us, you and myself, you know, we might have a team, but we also like the sport. Same thing with basketball, baseball, right? You know, if you can appreciate other things that happen with other teams, it, it could be glorious. Mm-hmm. The Browns spanked the Cardinals 27 nothing. It's not fair. Mm. It's not fair. Angels are interviewing Ron Washington. I hope they like cocaine. Well, I mean, he yeah, he deserves a, another. Shot. I like Ron Washington sure. just yeah. because he's he likes the party doesn't mean that he should have gotten fired. Texas. He was in at, he, you know in Atlanta for for a few years there, got himself a ring as one of their coaches. So, no, nah, he's he he deserves getting another shot for sure. Him, Willie Randolph, a bunch of guys mm-hmm. that just kind of got turned mm-hmm. off, never for whatever reason. <clears throat> uh, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Anyways. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Indianapolis Colts beat the Panthers twenty-seven to thirteen. Eh, I don't care about other team. Panthers are terrible. Yeah, and that's the whole thing. When Adam Thielen is your best guy, how can I like evaluate Bryce Young mm-hmm. when you have no O line as well and no run game? Mm-hmm. What what can I do to say one is better than the other? I know Stroud amazes me, but you know Jared Goff had a tough year in year one. Because he was on a crappy team with an antiquated head coach. Just saying, history yeah. repeats itself. Yeah, and then the Rams got a good guy, and then look what happened. Uh, all right, the the Raiders beat the Giants. Space. <sighs> you know the Giants man, are terrible, man, yes, man. but man, Antonio Pierce as a head coach, he a dog, man. Yeah, people love they him. Should, they should have given him the Biscay a couple of years ago mm. because of everything that happened. I still don't know about switching to Aiden O'Connell over Jimmy G. Maybe it's my Jimmy G love because the whole thing of like you don't need new players, you just need schemes. But I think Antonio Pierce just gets it where it's like just run the ball. Don't make it complicated. <laughs> Pass it to your best guy. Every play defense well. And to defend the Giants, it is very rare because I just don't like Brian Dabble. I don't I don't know how to explain it to you. I just I'm not great about it. And I don't like Daniel Jones, right? But they they didn't draft well for receivers. They didn't add anybody receiver wise. O line's bad, but when everybody is this hurt, and it goes back to why I appreciate the Tannehill Willis um, Levis kind of thing, is because at least you're secure of what you have and you're not stuck recycling. Like, look what how Josh Dobbs won was because he wasn't even in. It was supposed to be Jared Hall and he got hurt. So, who's your backup to that? The Times like, we're just going to keep three quarterbacks and they're all going to learn our system. And it worked, right? Mm. Because look at what's happened in Rams. Once again, Safford's hurt. I think it, the Cowboys riding off within the next two years. That seems like it. But then we had to put in Brett Ripien. The year before that was John Walford, right? And then then you get this happens. We get Daniel Jones who gets hurt. And then you get the most New York Giant persona in Tommy DeVito. We've seen the Instagram photos. It reminds me of Sean from um, What We Do in the Shadows in Christopher's Body from The Sopranos. <laughs> And he, he just wasn't going there. We just don't know because that's the thing sometimes about the draft. And it's about the Aaron Rodgers, Zach Wilson thing that I always come back to where the issue isn't necessarily do you have first round draft picks in the draft? Do you have quality backups to draft in the draft? Right. Mm. So oof, it was just a massacre, but good for Antonio Pierce. Cause I kind of feel it, man. He kind of, it's the same thing like D'Amico Ryan's as a head coach coming into it. Like there's something, I don't think player coaches are the best because some of them are just, at the end of the day, they're just, they come off as idiots. Mike Singletary, because if you guys don't remember about Mike Singletary about 12 years ago, yeah. they were losing. The and then he, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he dropped his pants to, you know, make mm-hmm. it say, y'all acting like babies. And then Troy Smith was like, I'm about to kill you. <laughs> so you, you do have to have that balance. But then when you get like conventional repeat guys like Josh McDaniels and to a degree 
like Frank Reich, who I'm sure is a good guy, but really he was just, you know, nose diving in those last couple of years in, in uh, Indiana. I'm like, it's more you, dude, like, or mm. Indianapolis. I'm like, it's more you, man, it feels like. Um, it, it, it does act like a breath fresh year, but let's get it out there right now. Josh McDaniels should have never been a head coach to begin with. Sometimes one and done, and that's, that's yeah. all you need, baby. Yep. And the stories all that came out afterwards were very telling. And I don't sure. like to necessarily believe it, but I, I don't think he would go as far as don't ever talk about the Patriots that way. But I think he couldn't confront grown ass men. Mm. Uh, Fifteen, I, I without a doubt in my mind, Josh McDaniels is a guy that won't look you in the eyes because he'll kind of get nervous. You, you can just you could just sense it. You just sense it. All right, the Eagles beat the Cowboys. Ooh, speaking about a guy who maybe we should just never recycle him again. Mike McCarthy doesn't call a good gameplay, man. You talk about being stuck in the old ways and formula. Because mm. the Eagles should not have won that game. And then they did, right? Mm. And, you know, you need diversity. I like what the Eagles are doing. I, I, I think it's refreshing to have repeat people repeating because you do need that stability because it creates a narrative of who to knock off. If, if you we're a little bit older, but if you always think about like the nineties Cowboys and nineties Niners is always like, they were always there. So when it wasn't a team that was doing it, it was great. The, the other fresh, you know, breath of fresh air would be like the heat and the nuggets going last year when it was the first time where it wasn't a Steph Curry team or LeBron mm-hmm. game, James team. You have to get the, the national people kind of invested. And that's how you do it by creating repeat people. I mean, hell, you had that in Philly for such a long time with uh, Reed and McNabb because what people need to realize, no, you know, Andy didn't go to five Super Bowls with McNabb. It was just, you know, the NFC championships. But you, mm-hmm. you felt that was always titled to be the best thing. The same thing with the Belichicks and the Bradys, right? Yeah. So it's good. Philly, I feel like, is playing with some loose cards with some of the injuries, but it, it was entertaining game. I'll, I'll give him that. No. And Will Levis, because I didn't mention it, but Will Levis is better than Dak. Um, he's better than Aiden O'Connell. He's better than Tommy DeVito. Better than Dak, we'll see. Mm. No, and then better than Jalen. No, J- Jalen's earned that keep. I don't know if he's a fully two hundred forty million dollar man yet. Okay, but... uh, we, we also didn't. Uh, let's see. Is he better than uh, Deshaun Watson? Absolutely. <laughs> Is he better than Clayton Tune? Yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah. Eddie. We just won a game. What, 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 what are we missing here? Uh, Bryce Young. Yes, they're in the same draft class. Yeah. He was the he was the first pick in the second round. Yeah. I'm taking that. That's where Lamar Jackson would have been had he had the Ravens not traded up from the second to the first to get him at 32. Mm. I'm taking that. If you are, and I'm saying it right now, if you're the first pick in the second round, you're a round one pick quarterback who just wasn't picked up in those final bits because no one wanted to trade for you. Because typically, the 31s and the 32s, which was who? Chiefs and mm. Eagles don't need a quarterback. Mm-hmm. So you, yes, he's playing like the third best quarterback right now. He's probably, technically playing like the second best rookie quarterback. I'm gonna give it to him. Better than Gardner Minshew. Yeah, I mean Gardner. <laughs> Gardner Gardner's a I just slice need, of lesser. Yeah, I just need all of them right now. So we we got yeah. to them. Um, better Mac Jones. Better. Have than you watched Sam his Howell. throws? Have you seen his throws? Yes, I, I, I just want you to confirm all of them. So we yeah, sure sure we got through all. You confirmed everybody else. All right, uh, and then let's see the Bills and the Bengals. Not better than Joe Burrow. I, I think mm-hmm. give me three more games. I'll say Josh Allen. Josh okay. Allen has been out of it. Out of it. You got Stefan, and you can blame Ken Dorsey all you want. You also don't have to follow every single thing Ken Dorsey says. So just saying. Mm. Joey B is great. Like, I, I kind of want the Bengals to be competitive in the AFC North because there is actually, I feel like, bad blood in that division. There really is. Like, I, I want to watch, I mean, like, the have, Bengals it's versus a, It's a the great Ravens. division right now. It's yeah, actually... I want to watch, and that's why you don't want any of them to suck. You have the Even Ravens, the people who thought were there, the, the Bengals who started off slow, but they're back to where they were, people thought were there. And you got the Steelers hanging around, and everybody's yeah. like, you guys should be bad, but you're not. Yeah. <laughs> and if then, you want to make me watch. If you and make then the Browns, watch. who's like, well, you guys, like, we all fucking hate you because of Deshaun, but, but, uh, <laughs> but you know, you're there too, right? So... Yeah, the, the NFC, the AFC North is probably the the most exciting division, I would say. It's interesting as hell, man. Mm-hmm. Because all I those mean, teams legitimately could win it, and it doesn't feel like okay, so one of you guys has to win it by default, like with the AFC and the NFC South. Yeah, I, I want that. I want. I need. 
I need that kind of Lamar Joey B man because I think they've missed each other a couple of times. At least mm-hmm. get into the playoffs. Yeah, you know, because the thing true. is, like with the Steelers, is like it's Kenny Pickett doesn't like you know rock my socks kind of thing. It's more like Mike Tomlin and T.J. Watt just find a way. Mm-hmm. And then with the Bengal or with the with the Browns, remember we just don't like Deshaun and we don't like Jimmy Haslam because of he's the one who created this precedent. Because Jimmy Haslam was so desperate to have what he considered to be a franchise quarterback, he's the reason why all of us have to now figure out how to play fran- franchise quarterbacks in a a, a small cap right mm-hmm. era coming into it and the simple answer is well now we got to raise the cap but we ain't going to do it for whatever reason but it's one of your owners who did this so everybody else is just following a suit like Deshaun was the one to get that 250 million dollar guarantee he didn't want to come to cleveland but we like miles garrett the guy's just so damn good man holy crap and finally the chargers beat the jets i don't I, I'm, yeah. I'm over justin herbert I gave up All on right. it. Is okay. he better? Is Levis better? Absolutely. All righty. Absolutely. I'm putting it right now. And we can usually say Levis is better than Wilson. Okay. So so here's the thing I want to kind of bring up about Aaron Rodgers because it's the petty train. We can't be petty. I hope he's healthy. I hope he comes back. I hope he gets to the playoffs because I got I got one more in me. Like Indiana <laughs> Jones, I got one more in me <laughs> like Vince for Carter. a – Yeah, I got Vince Carter. I got one more in me. For a Rodgers gets the playoff and doesn't do anything game. I got one more in mm. me. I don't want to wait another year. We might not <laughs> even get another year because if, so if we need Tech, Zach Wilson to Zach drag Wilson is taking the eight Jets sacks. into the final wild card spot. I, I believe in you, baby. I believe you. I've been your only. I, I've been telling everybody to get off of you because to be fair, and I was watching like that Stephen A. Pepperidge Farm bread from Zach Wilson. Yeah, I, I need a little bit of spice. I need that Ezekiel bread where it's healthy for you, even though it's kind of pricey. You know what I'm saying? Because, <laughs> yeah. you know, I, I was watching fiber. like an ESPN thing as I was eating my lunch today and how he was going like Zach Wilson's not a starting NFL. I would agree with you because that's what we've been saying since he was taken in the second round three years ago. Mm. But, like. but the, the whole thing is that i have i had to open up the world's eyes about aaron Rodgers statistically not before he got weird i'm happy he's healthy enough to walk around like i never really wish ill on people and that's he's he's quirky and he's a liar but you know so is almost all of us right but i i got one more in me mm-hmm. this year i need it now i need yeah we're gonna try to get to the year charles so give it to me give it to me all righty well uh, my nephew just beat spider-man he just texted me. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, yes. <laughs> He's like, I'm empty. Well, Charles, let's head on over to the cage. We're at It'll 207. Be... Perfect. It will be short. Welcome, everybody. Your weekly Chuplex the Cage with Charles. Now, remember, wrestling is not disclaimer. Wrestling is not fake. It's scripted. It's a stage fight. It's a song and dance. It's poetry, emotions about men and women chasing championships, establishing legacies, being the holy hell of each other all for my entertainment it's just so much wrestling francisco but the beauty of everything is that you know we're running on three pay-per-views last this weekend was crown jewel last weekend this weekend there's nothing thank you christ next weekend is full gear so we're gonna that's why i'm not gonna talk heavy about AEW this week because next week's perfect for it i don't need anything in wb and then the following week is survivor series so we're, we're gonna keep on the backdrops and we'll go with AEW first the build to full gear is happening I have bought two AEW pay-per-views. I bought Full Gear from like three years ago or two years ago. The main headline was CM Punk versus Eddie Kingston and then Hangman and Page going against Kenny Omega for the title. And there was other matches that were in there like MGF versus Darby Allen. I bought Forbidden Door, which was in June, right? I got, I was like, and that's when I had COVID. So I'm like, yeah, man, let's just do it. And I guess COVID made me delusional because Forbidden Door just wasn't sticking, even though I like Okada, Danielson. More on that in a second. I'm looking at this Full Gear card at the moment and i am tempted to drop another 50 bucks because i've been watching the stories i might have been talking about it on the show so much but i'm kind of about it because right now they have orange cassie versus john moxley which is a rematch of the all out pay-per-view for the initial title and i've heard good things about that i've yet to watch it because it's tough i i don't want to pirate stuff anymore i don't want to give my computer like computer aids you know what i mean so i, I really want to just avoid that on the streamers or i don't want my information stolen you know i don't need my security yards card taken social security and all that stuff taken just because i want to see wrestling when i make enough to pay 50 bucks right for a pay-per-view um but i'm really kind of all in on Hangman Adam Page versus Swerve Strickland. The backstory is Strickland's broken into Hangman's house, talking to the Hangman's baby, 
it feels like a real blood feud. They had their match a couple of weeks ago at um, the Dream based one in Seattle. I forgot the name of it. I want to call it Dreamville because I'm thinking Jay Cole, but it's not that. Wrestle Dream. Wrestle Dream. That's what it was. But they could build a card a little bit. Also, we have Sting wrestling in triple threat match with Darby Allen and. Um, who's not edge anymore, but he's adding Kobe against Kristen cage, Luchasaurus, Nick Wayne. I've been kind of telling you and sending you clips on that. There's more to come, but I'm kind of like invested in that build. It might not have that same gravity that made me want to buy the original full gear. And it does not have Okada, Brian, since you don't worry. Cause on wrestle kingdom in January, we're getting the rematch. Cause you know, Danielson got hurt going against Andrade a couple weeks ago, busting orbital, but wrestle kingdom is like new Japan's. Um, so we're going to kind of pivot to new Japan for a second. Wrestle kingdom is like new Japan's WrestleMania. And um, I guess it would be AEW's Revolution because I think that's supposed to be the important one, one of the important ones. It's only too much weight. We're getting Okada Danielson too, as predicted. Now, remember in that match, Okada legitimately broke Danielson's arm. He fractured his forearm, and he still went 10 minutes to make Okada tap out. It, it always felt like it was going to be a trilogy that they'll bring into. And I'm ready for it because the whole thing is like, you know, and they had a tag team match on Dynamite a couple weeks ago. So the whole thing is like, yeah, I beat you twice, but you got me twice by, you know, breaking my arm and then also, you know, attributing to the overall injury that I have. You're making a blood feud out of it. And I totally expect Okada to take it on this turf and we'll figure out what match three would be at the next Forbidden Door. But this is why I kind of like I get annoyed on Forbidden Door because now you're just like everybody's everywhere. You know what I mean? So it doesn't matter. Can we change Forbidden Door into something? You know, I, I don't know. Figure it out, Tony Khan. But I'm all in on sitting onto it. Other things about New Japan Wrestling. We were originally going to get... So, if you remember, there was multiple titles. When we first started the show, there was a New Japan World Championship. Then there was a New Japan Intercontinental Championship. Then there was the New Japan US Championship. And then there was the Open Neverweight Championship. They retired the Intercontinental title when they had it merged to become the Transformers Decepticon title, which is now the New Japan World Heavyweight Championship. Um, Will Ospreay beats Kenny Omega, who at the time was New Japan u.s championship forbidden door but he's like i don't represent the u.s i represent also the uk so he had made like a new japan uk title with it so i had the spinner so osprey i gotta sneeze hold that thought hold that thought come on excuse me you know always when i'm about to make a point right so osprey had beaten shoto Muna, who was john moxley's you know um you know a uh, little appointed not successor i forgot the word mentor i forgot that it was mentee is what i was looking for because hmm. the brand apprentice. is right apprentice yeah sure there yeah apprentice is the other one i was saying yeah in the way they would do it they go with apprentice sure i always think star wars because the apprentice is always going to overtake the master so i think mentee is easier but that's me so he beat shoda and apparently in a very good match in new japan what i always try to tell people the style of those matches are very physical and tough and, and bar- i was say barbaric like ecw but ooh, you're watching a fight man you know what i mean so it's supposed to be at Wrestle Kingdom Moxley versus Osprey for the US belt. I'm like, yes, daddy is here for that. And then David Finley, son of Fit Finley, new leader of the Bullet Club, comes in and smashes both belts. I'm like, ah, and no one. I don't know if Dave Finley has go home heat. I'm not crazy about his look, and I think he should kind of change it because he looks like a Jay White knockoff. But, you know, sometimes you just got Jay White didn't sell me in the beginning until, you know, you, you get some time, you develop your character. So maybe it works. But they're going to be introducing a new title. So they might be bringing back the Intercontinental title that they um, retired. And that helps, I guess, because I felt like the mid-card title was the never open weight title. So it's still fine. Shingo Itagi, uh, Takagi, who we love, by the way, the last of the dragon here, the last dragon, now holds that belt. But they're building that into it, so that's leading to Wrestle Kingdom. Um, that's my little bits on New Japan. I have to get back into it because I know Wrestle Kingdom is coming because it's going to be Sonata versus Naito at the main event and Naito and Sonata were part of the same faction of those ingobernables they hop on and you know Sonata left to go join I think it's just five guys that's literally the name of it so you know like I said it's weird sometimes in New Japan but sure whatever makes it work fine um AEW back to that really quick they are um doing the Sega thing and I think that's tomorrow and I want to comment on that (laughs) because they're working with game publishing Yakuza I, and I think I sent you a tweet on to it, but if Kenny and Jericho don't come out as Majima and Kiryu, what are we doing here? And I agree. I just need someone to come in with a little uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, like headgear, just to make me laugh. Yeah, we kind of need the whole the whole thing. I'm, I want to chime in here just to see. Yeah. I mean, just the references. Yeah, you do have to do like a Sonic reference if you if if it's like an all around thing. And yeah, the 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 man who erased his name is coming out this month, right? So it could definitely just be a tie-in to to promote that. But Sega, of course, just came out with Sonic 
last month, and I don't, I doubt they'll have any deep cuts with yeah. regards to references. Maybe like Wolf from Virtual Fighter, someone could be like him because he's a wrestler, or or Jeffrey, I think is also a wrestler. I'll just pop if someone goes and says Bakamatai. I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, someone comes out of like a, a manhole cover with Majima's. <laughs> construction uh could you imagine and <laughs> i wonder if jericho would know because right now he's like him and kenny are helping against the don Callis family but you know that, that AEW sometimes has good storylines and sometimes AEW has that trash shit you know 16 17 uh that i can't get involved and it suffers i think it's always because they have short pay-per-views but they're increased to like eight pay-per-views this year like they're going to be going for i think eight now because they want that warner Bros. discovery money man and mm. I'm happy for it because it makes storylines easy. WWE doesn't do every pay per view now. They sometimes they front load it on a couple of pay per views, like to do. Um, when, when is this happening? Tomorrow? tomorrow? Yes. Okay. All right. And so you know, I will at least spam you. For Don't real. worry. Yes. Yeah. I'm like, very like, interested. Like, it'll be there because they've done it with like the Rick and Morty stuff. And then remember for okay. Halloween they had a uh, they had them dress up as Ghostbusters and then Stay Puff. So Surprised like they didn't do any Mortal Kombat stuff because that's WB as well. Yeah, but Sega, I mean, yeah, I guess, but I, I, I will just take, I, I'll appreciate Sega more because it's just Sega. Sega, yeah. because it's going to make people go and say, Sega's still around, not realizing that it's a game publisher. Yeah. And it does more than Sonic. Like, yeah, I always knew yeah. about Yakuza, but once we tried it, we loved it. Mm-hmm. So that that's them. Um, I don't think I have anything else on AEW because they, you're going to get a very heavy loaded uh, AEW next week because I will actually review some stuff this week. I'm, I'll watch maybe some Light Dynamite. Francisco and I had a weird part where we're like, we don't know what to play yet. Um, so we're, we're trying to figure out. I think we're going to go to Pokemon. But the thing is, you don't just play Pokemon solo for 45 hours. You you interweave it with other games. So that's where Wake will probably come in. We'll, we'll see. I, I gotta You got to do American Nightmare for sure. Finish out Wonder. I got to play some. I got to figure it out. We're not there yet. It's tough. WWE, let's do this. Um, two things that were announced. NXT is going to the CW. That CW, the one that was doing the Arrowverse. I guess they want to be bigger now into a broader appeal, which get more people to watch it, which is sports or sports entertainment. They have the ACC games that are put on there. I haven't watched the CW in forever. I think the last thing I watched from it was... So they're moving from the licensing rights for USA is going to expire. They're going to go now be um, broadcast on the CW. Okay. So I don't know if there's still going to be Tuesdays or not. Probably right because you have three nights of wrestling that has to be attributed. You're not going to do on the who's, weekends because you make no CW? money. That, that... that that used to be UPN and all that stuff. I know, but is it Warner Brothers or is it Paramount? Well, let, let, I, I think I think CW is just itself. Um, the CW network is next star media ship i think it's just its own gig man because remember they fused i know they they show like acc college football games or whatever for the cw yeah but that's why i think they're trying to get that appeal instead of wasting money on television shows with cgi and paying actors they're like let's just get more sport involved because cw used to be a combo of upn and wb so it's just probably a subsidiary it was yeah cps and wb at one point and then some other company acquired it um, next star is all i see and i think S- warner brothers and paramount still own a tiny bit of it yeah 12 which... 12.5 percent ownership stake so it's kind of theirs but kind of not yeah so it's, it's like a short it's probably a small okay. conglomeration and everybody else point being is that anyways it, it is said to be like seven times the amount of annual average revenue that they're going to get i think i sent it to you guys in the tweet but yeah everybody's the whole... got the cw because it's it's you can get it from like you don't have to have cable. You can just have a, an antenna and get it. Yeah. And, and so it's about that marketing that you want because it's about ad revenue, television, eyes on the prize. That's the reason why I think, like, if, you, if you're getting the ACC, you got that sports. Wrestling does make cash. And it kind of, like, I know it might bother people in that sense. I'm sorry, but y'all watch, like, you know, if y'all if y'all used to watch, you know, tucker carlson it's okay for me to watch you know wrestling i'm just saying that right now that's some nonsensical stuff that tries to portray as being reality it's very political on election day there you go guys we're, we're, we'll i'll bring in i'll bring in the investments where even though people probably still can't tell what my political linings are um it's good money it's good for them it's good for people to have something of a viewing ship and you know it's good for business because the more appeals of 
entertainment channels and television wanting to encourage wrestling. There was rumors that NWA National Wrestling Alliance was going to have a deal with CW. I didn't really believe that, whatever. But it is said that um, if they were going to go make some money, stuff like that, puts more on the price. It keeps people employed. You got to remember that there's smaller stuff. It, it helps. More money is better because you don't know if TKO is really going to pay WWE wrestlers. So getting this ad money is going to help out, right? So I'm happy for it. it starts in October. I don't. I think I can get CW somewhere like on a streaming or whatever. But hey, you know, say la vie. We'll see. So there's that too. A better note is because fuck Vince McMahon, 18. Very cursy today. TKO, which is the new holding of the merger of UFC and then WWE, they had the latest filing of um, of this quarter. And the, their statement was basically saying how, um, what is it? He's a risk. You know, Vince McMahon's a risk and is a, a, a problem for the money. I think I sent to you guys the tweet. So the whole thing is like, and that's why he can't be on the board. So if this is all like this blowing up in Vince's face, because you know of the stuff that he was doing in the past and trying to force himself back in and that means we permanently just never have vince because he's not doing anything creative and you see the difference a little bit more it was a little bit more like when hunter first came over but you can just tell it, it's it's just easier i'm like the happiest guy because we hate vince mcmahon he is the devil uh reading the tweet now tko added vince mcmahon being part of the board under the risk factor section in his latest sec filing what what does board directors want to do make money what's better than that making more money what's the worst thing for them losing money so if this meant vince gets a payout and he's on exile it's going to be the equivalent of the godfather have you seen the godfather part two because you're the only person i care about on this everybody else has but i know you're not mr movie well i'm gonna yeah. keep you without the spoilers have you seen it yeah Oh, so this really feels like, you know, Michael kill, having Fredo killed, but he's chilling and mm. like thinking about what he did. Of okay. Vince saying, I, I say, I just sold my family's um, legacy, my legacy, and all I got was this measly paycheck for it. And him just looking off like, I would love that. Let him be on his Connecticut porch, just think about, like, damn, remember when I used to be the WWE and I was the biggest thing? I even grew this mustache, and now I don't have it at all. <laughs> and I built the careers of everybody. I built the careers of he's Steve Austin, meme now. Johnson, Roman Reigns, and all this stuff. He's dick dastardly. Yeah, it, it it is the just of desserts, and it is it is even better now than when I originally found out he was retiring, right? Because I knew he was coming back until it, I I see something stronger, and there's nothing stronger than the SEC, baby. You know that puts the fear in the heart of men, and if those who don't believe in God, the SEC will make you pray to God, just like the IRS, because they'll they'll screw them. So that's good news. Let's talk about Crown Jewel. Let's talk about other things. I didn't watch all of it. Because when you do pay per views in the middle of a Saturday, I got I got issues to do, guys. I got errands, I got all this stuff. You know, I have a life, um, and I'm gonna feel bad when they do Elimination Chamber in February because this is in Australia and it's going Australia time, so that means wrestling's gonna be at nine in the morning. I am asleep, hungover, or just you know at the gym at nine in the morning on a Saturday. I'm just telling you guys right now, so don't expect me to do that. But I wanted to watch a majority of the pay-per-view, and it was fine. And I'm not concerned about spoilers because everything else won't exactly how I predicted it. So I have, like, no incentive to go watch even the remaining good matches. But I, I think it was, you know, some people call it, like, a glorified house show. But I thought it had some consistency. It was fine. You know, going over it, Sami Zayn beat JD McDonough in the pre-show. Seth Rollins beat Drew McIntyre. <sighs> I felt like that match could have been better, you know, coming into it. I felt like something was missing. I felt like... Seth should have lost, and the problem is, is that Seth is going to be in the War Games match in Survivor Series, which is three weeks away, so they're building that already, and maybe I'll leave off on that. But the problem is you're not going to have that title defended, so you have no December pay-per-view. And remember, the World Heavyweight Championship is in its inaugural year, and I don't, I don't, I think you really betray the crowd if you have Seth drop that title on live TV on a Raw, right? So that might mean I'm getting Drew McIntyre versus Seth at the Royal Rumble, which is fine. I'll take that any day of the week where Drew wins it. But I'm, I'm kind of over the Seth stuff. But he's going to be in War Games and War Games. We're not going to do the prep yet. Sorry, Andrew. I know you're asking about it. I've talked about it for like the last four years, though, every time it comes up. It's where blood feuds go to be dealt with, not titles. And I understand that. Um but yeah, the match got better. The women's five way was good. Rhea Ripley beat Nia Jax, Raquel Rodriguez, Shayna Baszler. So we start for the 11 minutes that they had. They were putting on some bangers. So Sokoa mauled John Cena in a 16 minute match, which ended him just like, you know, sending, like doing 10 some of those spikes on Cena. I thought Cena was going to win. 
and he's not retiring, but I don't, I, I don't know. Maybe you want to give the rub to Solo, but the problem is Solo can get the rub, sure, but he's not growing out of Roman's, sh- going out of Roman's shadow yet. So what does it really accomplish unless you have him challenge Logan Paul for the US title? We'll on that in a second, kids, as I hit my headphone. Logan Paul versus Rey Mysterio was my favorite match that I saw. I was, I've been impressed with Logan. I understand he's a dick, 19, for lack of a better word, and his brother isn't alike, but, you know, I, I'm a wrestling fan, and sometimes your wrestlers are dicks, 20. Um, so you watch it. Ray Mysterio was good. You know, Ray Mysterio was just a godsend at 47. He can still pick up, and the match was compelling. Match ended with brass knucks being used by Logan onto Ray because Santos Escobar, who's part of Ray's crew, who may be doing a heel turn left it for Logan to use or maybe not use because he was chasing one of his goons. But, you know, there were some botches that Logan Paul saved Ray from doing. They had good flow. It was a good story of big man, little man. Ray can still put on a show. I liked it, man. Like, you know, I don't think it was a bad match at all. So, you know, I was approving. And then I left off on EO Sky, Bianca, Cody, Roman, and LA Knight. I didn't watch them. I watched them on the Twitter stuff because I was like, okay, it's just three matches. And everything that happened in the match went as predicted. EO Sky beat Bianca because Kyrie Sane came back. She used to be in WWE. Left, came back again. Her and um, EO and Asuka used to be girls up in stardom, I believe. So this might be creating infection. There's a storyline they could build with it because Kyrie's not part of damage control. EO is along with Bailey and um, Dakota Kai. Are we splitting that up? What are we doing here? Bailey attacked Ka- Ka- Kyrie. Kyrie. I'm thinking Ninja Turtles here. Kyrie that sent off the storyline for her to be off the TV and be gone from WWE. Interesting stuff. What are we going to do about a war games, right? Cody Rhodes beat Damian Priest. Meh. You know, don't care, right? Because it was, it was just building Survivor Series. You didn't at least put the briefcase on the line. Right. Um, I will say Damien tried to cash in earlier on Seth, but then Sami Zayn stole the briefcase. They're all going to be inter- intermingled. Roman Roman Reigns versus LA Knight. Roman won. LA kicked out of Spear. Um, LA hit the BFT on Roman, and then Jimmy Uso came out and interfered, but he didn't interfere like they usually interfere. They just had him put Roman's foot on the rope, so it was minimal. And then he came, LA came outside the ring, hit like a, you know, a suplex onto Jimmy on the table and then Roman speared him through the barricade and speared him again in the ring together. One, two, three. So I think I was okay with that booking because remember this is Knight's first time into the main event. So for him to lose clean to Roman would kind of like kill any push to a degree, right? Cause that means you weren't ready for the big time. You weren't even at the almost, you need some interference and it isn't the kind of interference that you're used to in the bloodline interfering much like, you know, when Cody lost, it took everybody and their mother to try to beat Cody. And then solo came out and helped out Roman on the one, two, three, where it was just, Hey, we just put Roman's foot on the rope, right? We helped out. That's all the contribution you get. To, I love that meme, by the way, we just lose the little points because it's what night does. It goes LA night. And Roman's like, eh, eh. I'm like, that's me. I'm petty like that. What can I say? I didn't watch the match. I'm sorry. Maybe I'll go back to watch it just to see it on my own take, but I'm fine with the result because Wrestling, you do have to suspend disbelief, but this was not going to be the pay-per-view match that Roman loses the title on. You know what I mean? Like, if it happens at Mania against Cody, it'll probably happen. I'm also okay with it happening at Rumble, but it's not. As long as I get either Roman and AJ at Rumble, which I'm I'm excited to see. I I can live with Roman Randy at Rumble, sure, whatever. But if I get Roman Randy AJ at Rumble, a triple threat, because Roman hasn't had a triple threat in a long time, man. It's been like since Mania, where a couple of Manias ago, where him, Brian, and Edge had it. Charles can use it. I deserve it. I need it. It's what I want. But overall, from what I did watch at Crown Jewel, I enjoyed it. It was fine. And then we go to the Road Survivor Series. And the War Games is going to be Team Cody and the Dick Riders, 21, versus Judgment Day, who have go home heat for me. Cody can win me over. It's just the problem is I need, I need better booking because. Dude, we still have to figure out how we do this to March. It's about it's like being in a relationship, but you just kind of want to see a new change of pace. You're just holding hands. And you want to get some tongue action, in, right? And that's how I feel like with it. They should have just had Cody win at Mania, and that's it. But sour grapes. And that's all I'm going to give you this week on the cage. So I'm sure there's more, but that's all I got. Okay. Well, that's it, Charles. I think we're we're done for this week. Bye-bye, everybody. Take care, and I hate you, Joe Cronin. <laughs>